Fun in dramatic circumstances against Donamana. Donamana right in the game throughout. We have the playoff, the big match between YMCA and the home club, CIYMS. I'm Andrew Leonard. I'm joined by my two wise colleagues. I'm taking a slightly more optimistic route than then. I'm in the polo shirt, the boys have the fleeces on. I've got the ex-Ireland international, Kyle McCallan, and RT Sports, John Kenny. John, it was a great day yesterday. It was, it was a super day yesterday. The weather was set fair as well. It looks like we're going to have another nice day here as well. I'm really looking forward to this match. I thought yesterday, uh, YMCA were tremendous, especially in the field. Obviously, didn't set the biggest total that they could possibly do, but they really defended it extremely well. Uh, and I think the COYMS are a stronger side say, than Donna Manor, littered with internationals as well and overseas players, and I think this is going to be a very tight match today. Kyle, three, it was a tale of three catches, one behind the stumps, two in the outfield, but all three of them outstanding. Yeah, and we had heard a lot about the YMCA feeling, and ultimately that's probably what won them the game. You know, the, the, the Curtis Camper getting the two McClintock brothers in that one over, when Donna Manor were very much on top, uh, swung the game very much. You know, double YM's way and you know it just in a, in a 20 over game small things make big big differences yeah the game starts at 1pm local time in about just under 10 minutes now and about 20 minutes ago out at the toss it was a little bit of a change from yesterday so Donna won the toss yesterday decided to bowl first but today Nigel Jones the CIYMS captain he won the toss chose to bat first is that a surprise to you Kyle you're out with the captains earlier no, no, I don't think it was a surprise. The one thing that was very interesting was Nigel's hesitancy at the toss. You know, it took him quite a while to actually to, 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 to bump in that he was going to bat first. And I know Jack Tector was going to bat first. And a lot of that's down to the very late injury to Jason van der Merva. Uh, Jason van der Merva is one of those guys for the CI team who's, who kind of at times flies under the radar. Everybody focuses on, on, on their big names and their big guns. Jason van der Merva, I've always found in the years, comes up with, with the hard runs for them. None, none more so than last week. And the game that they lost by just the one run with DL up, up against Donamana, I think he went into bat when, when, when they were struggling at seven for two. And he was the one who gave them that vital bit of injection into their innings and got their innings going. And just looking at him, he's a pretty dejected looking figure in the tent here. He's very disappointed. And I know Jones, he's disappointed to lose him. Yeah, that's the breaking news. So a bit of team news. CIYMS, Jason van der Merva, a little bit of an incident going over the boundary rope. And Cardiac Rajavelu comes into the side. He was due to be 12th man. John Kenny, YMCA, unchanged. Unchanged and no surprise there, really. Um, the three Tector boys were extending yesterday. I thought that Harry pulled off one of the most amazing catches I think I've ever seen. But Curtis Camfer, the same thing as well. Didn't bat so well as we thought he would, but bowled extremely well as and took one of them steepling catch over his shoulder as well. There were world class catches yesterday. I think that could be the difference between the two sides. They're an extremely good fielding side, and obviously at the top end, the batsman can score the runs as we know. Big occasion, the European Cricket League playoff. You can see the sides gathering behind us, not just for the socially distanced team photos, but it's nearly time for the anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Belmont, the home of CIYMS Cricket Club. This is the European Cricket League playoff between CIYMS and YMCA. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for Ireland's call. And if I can remind you just about 
28 minutes ago, the toss took place. The toss this afternoon was won by Nigel Jones, the captain of CIYMS. And having won the toss, he has elected to bat. And very welcome to the Belmont Club, CIYMS in Belfast. I'm John Kenny with Kyle McCallum for this European Club Cricket League playoff, the T20 playoff between the 2019 champion CIYMS and the new champions crowned yesterday, the Dublin side YMCA, who beat Donna So the right to play in the 16 club championship in La Manga in Spain, 32 games spread over eight days. This year's, uh, unfortunately, was cancelled. So this is the playoff to determine who will go to the 2021 version in La Manga. It was due to be played in May of this year, but it's been pushed back, Kyle, to April of 2021. Big prize on offer, this one, because it's been expanded from an eight-club league into a 16-club league now. Yeah, it's a massive opportunity, and, and I think when you see the quality of the two sides on show, you know, Ireland are going to be very well represented. Whoever wins today's game, it's a huge step forward for the club game, you know, not just in, in Ireland, but in Europe. And, you know, I'm very eagerly anticipating today's game. I think it'll be a very close contest between two, you know, very star-studded teams. And uh, as umpires Al Neil and, and Rooley Black make way to the middle, along with CYMS openers, John Matchett and, and Chris Doherty, you know, I think everybody's felt with a little sort of a feeling of excitement and anticipation. Uh, crowds starting to build, sun shining. Uh, if you're in the local area, why not come down and, and, and witness what will be a fantastic game of cricket? Yeah, we had a wonderful day's cricket yesterday in the National T20 final, sponsored by Clear Currency. Uh, weather is similar to yesterday as well. It's a bit cloudy at the moment, but it's a nice warm day and we won't have any rain interruptions today. And the two openers, John Matchett and Chris Doherty, making their way out to the middle. Expectations, Kyle? Uh, I think expectations-wise, it, it should be a nail-biter. I see uh, John Matchett going to take strike here with, with Tom Anders opening the bowling. I think both captains you know, looked at the pitch yesterday, saw that there wasn't a great deal of pace in it. It was quite low and slow and quite difficult to score on, particularly as the ball got older. So I think it'll be interesting to see the approach that both sides take in the first six overs. I think they're going to have to try and take advantage of, of the first six overs while the ball's hard and while the field's in. And if that's the case, you know, just have a look at the batting depth that CIYMS have, and they're certainly going to be much more of a challenge. I think they bat deep for the YMCA bowlers. So it's an intriguing contest, and certainly the team that plays well on the day, it's that old cliche, it'll be that team that comes out on top. You mentioned in the introduction there that Nigel Jones seemed a bit hesitant about which way he was going to do. Was he going to bat? Was he going to bowl? Donamana uh, had no hesitation yesterday. Indeed, CIYMS would have done the same thing if they'd won the toss. They decided to field first, so he was still even up to the toss undecided, perhaps, Nigel Jones. Yeah, I, I think had it been 20 minutes previously and Jason van der Merwe was fit and healthy, I think there'd have been no hesitation. I think Nigel would have, would, have, would have just gone, we'll have a bat, thanks. But just losing that key middle-order batter is a big blow for CI. Anders with the first ball, and immediately John Matchett off the mark at the first run. The uh, score yesterday, we were thinking at one stage when the likes of Jack Tector was in for CIYMS, 150-160, in the, in the end they got 131, due to some uh, a bit of a late order collapse and some uh, tidy bowling from Donna Mana. So conditions similar here today. Yeah, I would say 140 is about a par score. Um, again, I, I said this a lot yesterday. I think you know you're you're looking at a guy here, Chris Doherty, who has who's been a revelation all season for CI. He got a very important run of ball 40 against Donnemana in the semi final, uh, and he will look to anchor the innings for CI. Um, it's a very very good single. Um, and that's the way Chris Doherty will play. He's very technically correct. He'll anchor the innings. Once he gets going, he, he starts to open up both sides of the ground. And he, you know, he's a key performer, particularly in the absence of Jason van der Merwe or CI. Yeah, it's a smart single, all right. Just made bat on ball and headed off straight away. Ball running to the YM captain, Jack Tector. 
Uh, slightly turned around the corner by Matchett. Uh, yesterday, Jack Tector was wearing number 31, the captain of YMCA. He's changed his shirt to number 20 today. I think there was a bit of celebrations yesterday, which kind of ruined that number 31 shirt and uh, he's had to change. Obviously, you can't get the laundry done up here. Yeah, I would imagine that has a large a large bit to play in it. And, and certainly, it'll be interesting to see whether yesterday's taken anything out of the YM boys, you know, whether their intensity drops any. Certainly, there's three very good singles taken by the, the, the CIYMS batters in the first three balls. And uh, again, we, we spoke about this on a low, slow pitch strike rotation and, and, and limiting them out to top balls is going to be absolutely crucial today. Tom Anders plays his T20 cricket for Munster Reds as well. Made his debut in 2018. Oh, and it's out. Caught a first slip. And the first wicket goes down in the very first over. And that's a big blow for CIY. That's Losing a, sorry, Chris Doherty. John, sorry, John. That's, that's, that's a massive blow. I was just saying there the importance Chris Doherty has played this year for, for CIYMS. Uh, an excellent piece of bowling. Just going across Chris Doherty. Finding the edge and a neat catch there at first slip. And early strike for YMCA. You know, that little bit of them just being taken, it'll be interesting because now you'll see Mark Adair striding to the pitch. Um, a swashbuckling batter. The ability to take the game away very, very quickly from any opposition team. So, uh, more dangerous, I think, if with, with a good, steady start. If if uh, if YMCA can get Mark Adair out in the, in the first six overs, they'll feel they're firmly on top. Mark Adair, a 24-year-old from Hollywood, uh, has played English county cricket for Warwickshire. Right on first bowler, also bites, bats uh, right-handed. Made his Irish international debut in May of 2016. Or May of 2019, I should say, a couple of years later. But uh, he's had injury problems in the past, uh, striding to the middle. And we thought he'd have number 13 on his back, but he's actually out there with no number on his back. But... He's a power hitter, isn't he? And he's uh, he's kind of ideal for T20 cricket. Yeah, interesting that 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 YMCA have put a man out now at the, the deep mid wicket boundary. That's a a, a, a favourite option for Mark. He, he likes to pick it up off length. Just an interesting little side note. Both Mark Adair and John Matchett, products of Sullivan Upper School in Hollywood, just down the road. So they'll be proud of their alumni. On the money from Anders. Both multi-talented. Um, Mark Adair obviously have a, 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 an out half for Sullivan Upper's first 15 schools cup finalist. John Matchett, first 11 hockey player at, at Sullivan as well. So um, both talented all-rounders. And uh, again, I would imagine Captain Nigel Jones will be looking for fine all-round performances from the two guys today. Little bit of an issue here, I think, with the sight screen at the pavilion end. I think there's a little bit of a glare coming off it. So I think umpire Alan Neal in contact with, with third umpire Mark Hawthorne. A little bit of movement behind us here. Just gives us an opportunity maybe just to talk about the impact of schools. You know, we, we, we were disappointed. I know YM were very disappointed yesterday that, that Willem de Klerk, yep. who I believe is on a rugby scholarship at St. Michael's, was, was, was not given the opportunity to play in an All-Ireland cricket final. Um, that's bitterly disappointing I know for YMC as a club and I'm sure for, for Willem himself I was quite looking forward to seeing him play myself um, talented performer and again a little bit like Mark Adair and John Matchett an all round sportsman yeah uh, the ironic thing about that is that the rugby match he was due to play in was actually called off as well because of the Dublin lockdown then he made himself available but obviously the selectors and coach Alan Lewis decided that it would be very unfair uh, the likes of Killian McDonnell who came in to replace him so uh, they're going with the same team again today. Side screen now fixed. And that's the end of an excellent opening over from Tom Anders. Three from it, but the crucial wicket of opener Chris Doherty. Three for one at the end of the first over. Good start from Dublin YMCA. Mikey O'Reilly marking out his run at the Strathair end. Another young, talented left arm opening bowler. Very encouraging to see so many young, talented players playing in, in such a big game. Um, can only stand the game in, in the country in good stead going forward. 
Just looking at JJ Cassie there, just doing a little bit of imagery there behind the stumps. He kept a mag kept a magnificent wicket yesterday. You know, number of stumpings and took the the, the catch ultimately. Pretends he won the match off Curtis Camphor to get rid of uh, the McClintock twin. Uh, Mikey Wright has also changed his short number. He was 88 yesterday, number 11 today. And, you know, I, I think uh, yesterday we were talking about the products of Dunham Manor, John, and I left out an old adversary of mine. Again, he's the captain of brigade nowadays, Andy Britton, reminded me this morning that he, he too was part of that magnificent conveyor belt of talent that comes out of the tiny village in, in County Tyrone that is Dunham Manor. So apologies to Andy if he's listening. <laughs> He tagged you on Facebook because of that. Really. <laughs> <laughs> they the know how to find media. you these days, no doubt about it. Here's O'Reilly. Little bit of shape, just tucked up. John Matchett, very important not to give John Matchett width. Mentioned his hockey ability. He's got great fast hands. Any width at all, he'll flash to the offside. So important now that Mikey O'Reilly just tucks uh, John Matchett up. That ball just dipping into his hip, perfect. Yeah, mostly known for his bowling, O'Reilly. Some time in South Africa, working on his batting back in 2018. And his second delivery, just prodded forward by Matchett. There's an early blow, losing Chris Doherty in the opening over. So uh, they look good together, which I know was only three or four deliveries, but the calling and the sense of how to run between the wickets between both Matchett and Chris Doherty look pretty good in that opening over it's just an awful shame from their point of view that he just nicked one to first slip that eludes the wicket keeper and the first boundary of the CIYMS innings good uh, wicket keeper Cassidy but on that occasion compared to get his hand on the ball yeah, just interesting. You know, that's the danger for Mikey O'Reilly. He's swinging the ball into John Matchett, so he's got a pretty limited margin of error. Very often now, the, the new way of, of of defending that type of bowling is to bring the third man up under the edge of the circle and give give Mikey O'Reilly fine leg back, particularly on a low, slow pitch. It's going to be hard to get at the third man. Yeah, that's nicely played by Matchett. Just open the face of the bat. Just to make a liar out of me there, John, didn't he? Just <laughs> ran that. But my point there was, if 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 Rory Anders had been up in the circle, I don't think that ball would have beaten him. You know, he'd have been there almost as a run saver to save a single. So, uh, tough decisions. Jack Tecker didn't get much wrong yesterday, so who am I to criticise? Yeah, it was interesting yesterday that Don Amana went with spin in the National Cup final in the early part of the CIYMS innings. But today it's... Speed from both ends. Tom Anderson, Mikey O'Reilly now from the Strathairn end. As the sun breaks through on a wonderful September day. Hard to believe September. Beautiful weather here in Belfast. Mark Adair facing. Just gets the maker's name straight down past the bowler. But no, no runner cruise. Remains on eight for one. And we're in the second over of this European playoff. Big prize on offer for the winner trip to La Manga next year. A few spectators dot around the ground for uh, O'Reilly. It's very nicely bowled. Marketer. Just having a look at having a look for now. That ends the second over. COMS 8 for 1. Uh, five runs from that over. It's going to be Anders to continue from the pavilion end. Uh, no change in the YMCA lineup from that victory yesterday. Tector, Anders, Harry Tector, Jack Tector is the captain, Tim Tector, JJ Cassidy, the wicket keeper, Robert Gamble, Michael O'Reilly, you've seen in action along with Tom Anders, Simi Singh, Curtis Camphor, and Killian McDonnell. I just wonder, John, was there any temptation from within the, the YMCA ranks to bring in young Mitchell Thompson, a leg spinner, mm -hmm. having seen the way the pitch performed yesterday? Just the one change for CIYMS and the big one too, Jason van der Merwe, the South African-born Irish underage international, 
He's 28 now, but uh, he injured himself in the warm-up, so Alan Coulter's in. Yeah, Alan Coulter has missed the, 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 the tail end of the season with a, with a, with a, with a, a knee problem. And he's he's been a magnificent performer for for CLIMS up here. So that, whilst whilst they take with one hand losing losing Jason, they'll be delighted to have Alan Coulter back. That's a good start from the two bowlers for YM. Eight for one. We're in the third over. Doherty's departed. The CIYMS team. Nigel Jones, their captain. Matchett and Doherty open. Doherty's departed. Mark Adair, the Irish international. Jacob Mulder, the Australian-born. Jacob Mulder. Uh, James Cameron Dow, the 30-year-old. David Miller. David Robinson. Kartik. Marjavelu. Ted Britton and Coulter. That's their starting eleven. Excellent work there from JJ Cassidy. Standing up with the stumps, you know, the medium pace of Tom Anders, just getting at the ball to nibble around a little bit, but just having the, the, the keeper up the stumps just puts, you know, the, the batters under pressure. You can't use the crease. You can't use your feet. Really good stuff, this. Yeah, Cassidy was excellent yesterday in the win over Donamana. Took one diving catch. And it's another stumping claim. Really good, this from Tom Anders. Just causing John Matchett a little bit of trouble. Just stuck, perhaps, a little bit in the crease. Um, looking suspiciously down at the pitch in front of him. But this is an excellent start from Dublin YMCA. Yeah, Darius taking his jumper off, so you can see number 13 on his back now. The non-striker's end. And they're getting a bit bogged down here now. We're in only in the third over. And Anders has been pretty accurate now in his second over. Taking the wicket in his first of Doherty. And it's only eight runs scored so far. Yeah, we had the three singles off the first three balls, but there's been quite a number of dots. Just, again, it's potentially a sign that this pitch is going to be difficult to score on. Mid-wicket just drops back at the end of the over. Beats the outside edge of the bat to end the third over. Good one from Anders as well. It's a maiden. A maiden, yeah. Eight for one at the end of three. Don't see very many maiden overs bowled in T20 cricket. We just got one then from Anders who's started excellently. Match it on seven. And they're yet to score. Now the Donamana supporters who came in yesterday were noisy and full of fun and really enjoyed the game yesterday until, I suppose, the latter part of the game when the wicket started to fall and they fell silent, but uh, really added to the occasion yesterday. It's four runs. I nearly hit that one myself. Nice, friendly long hop. Yeah, poor delivery from Mike Iorelli, but actually very well played from Marketer because the ball didn't come on. It just stayed down, but he just watched it carefully and, and pushed and you know, he's set that hard in front of the square. The deep backward square fielder given no chance. Two boundaries in this over. One five wides and that's a nice hit from Adair to get him off the mark. So suddenly from eight for one, they're 17 for one. It's the nature of T20 cricket, isn't it, John? You know, it's a game that ebbs and flows, that moves very quickly. It can it can swing on very fine margins. Oh, well, cry of yes, no. In fact, it was a yes from Matchett and a certainly a no from Adair. He was not leaving his crease. And they were a little fortunate that the ball didn't go to hand. Yeah, John Matchett looking for the single. An early enough call from Margaret Adair that gave him plenty of time to get back. Certainly the... Jack Tector close there at extra cover. Uh, trying to cut out the single with his brother Harry. And then Tim making the, the Tector trio there in the covers. That's another wide. And they'll run through. Make it two. 
Very nearly, very nearly one of those unique circumstances. That ball nearly ricocheted off JJ Cassidy's, JJ Cassidy's helmet. Would have been penalty runs. I think I heard John Matches saying, hit it, hit it, hit it. <laughs> you take anything at this stage. But, you know, Mikey O'Reilly just struggling a little bit this over. Yeah, he started well in his first over, but he's just strayed a little bit in the second. Too wide so far from it. And they've added seven runs as a result. That's better. Call from Rory Anders just in front of us saying that's a better line and length. Mikey. We're in bonus territory here in terms of our coverage. This is the European playoff. We had intended just to do the match yesterday in the National Cup final between YM and Donna Manor. So pleased to bring you this second game from Belmont and Belfast, nicely off the open face of the bat down to Anders for a single to match it. Roy Anders feeling that ball at third man. He's removed the jumper. He's got the pink headband on. Might just signal a change of bowling here at the pavilion end. Taking over from his brother Tom. And a good little bit of rebuilding here from CIYMS after the early loss of Chris Doherty. You know, John Matchett, 8 from 14. Margaret Dyer, 4 off 8. Uh, and going along reasonably well. Important to set it up for the power hitters later on. Very impressive figures for Tom Anders. Two overs, including a mating. One with one for three. And now we have the change with the introduction of brother Rory. First change of bowling this afternoon in the European Cricket League playoff. Coming into the attack and doing so from the pavilion end. Please welcome Rory Anders. Rory Anders with the headband, Stuart Broadlike, even for us older in the uh, commentary box, Dennis Lilly. Staying with pace and immediately on the money. It seems to be a little bit of a fad at the moment. I think it's a COVID-related fad now. We have these Alice bands, we've got headbands, we have, you know, long hair. We've either gone one of two ways, John. Boys have either got rid of the hair entirely and shaved it, <laughs> or they've, they've, they've let it grow out and they're going for the, the bandana look. That's down the leg side and it's called a wide. And sometimes bowlers will do that, won't they? They'll try to con the umpire by claiming a caught behind when clearly it's a wide, <laughs> but the umpire certainly not fooled on that occasion. Well... Us bowlers in T20 cricket, there's not much goes in our favour, so you'll try everything you possibly can to get the things to go your way, but there was no filling really black. The arms outstretched. That's high in the air. Clies will catch it, but Simi Singh won't cut that off. That's gone for the maximum. Lovely strike. And all Singh could do was watch the ball go sailing over his head. A little replay of an excellent shot from Young Matchett. Just held a shape. Head down, relied on, on good fast hands and timing, and that ball has soared over the rope for six. First six of the innings. Oh. Match moves to 14, score on to 27 for one. Just the four runs, a boundary for Mark Adair at the non striker's end. Interesting, JJ Cassie's going back to Rory Anders. Uh, not a lot of bounce. Good reply from the bowler, having been hit straight back over his head for a maximum. He's followed that up with two dots. Yeah, Matthew just stepped outside his crease there, trying to make room for himself, but it was seen by Rory Anders and all the decent ones. So another dot ball, always important in T20 cricket to keep the runs down to the minimum. Another cry for caught behind, but they came off the pad. I'm just thinking to myself here, there's potential for some nice little side play here. I think Nigel Jones has padded up. Coach of the Leinster Lightning, due to come in next. Good. You know, I think they like a Simi Singh. 
Um, Harry Tector would enjoy getting their coach's scalp potentially going down the road for some inter-pro cricket. be nice to be able to remind your coach if the, the day I got you out in the European Cricket League playoff final, wouldn't it? Indeed it would. Match it faces. There we are, third. That's what we're just talking about there. Third man up in the circle to finish the fifth over. It's actually a run saver. CMYMS, sorry, 27 for one. Game finally poised. Just waiting for our graphics to update. The score is 27 for one. Matches on 14. And Mark Adair is currently on four, the Irish International. Another change of bowling as well. And another Irish international, Curtis Camfer, who had such a big influence on the Irish team in the ODIs against England. Just eased away into the leg side by Adair for a single. Takes him to five. Yeah, a bit of a tale of two all-rounders here, the two Irish all-rounders, Mark Adair and Curtis Camfer. Coming head to head against each other. Brings John Matchett back on strike. Growing increasingly confident looking. Camper actually played for the South African under 19s before he declared for Ireland. His grandmother is Irish. And he's a huge addition to the Irish team, especially in one day internationals. Showed no fear with bat and ball, despite the fact that he was playing in. His first ODIs against the world champions. 28 for one now. With Good. CIYMS winning the toss and deciding to bat. Yeah, John Matchett looked to use the pace, play it late. That's exactly what you're talking about. Just again, open the face of the bat down to Rory Anders. Yeah, Rory Anders would, would be glad he's not got Nala Brown as his wicketkeeper. keeper. Nala, I think, had that ball been thrown on the half volley, or he might have got a... If he hadn't got a verbal tirade, he had have certainly known by the look that Nobby would have given him. <laughs> it's important that the feeling is up to scratch. Swing and a miss. From Adair. Yeah, Camfer in the Irish setup because uh, it was Nile O'Brien who asked him, was he uh, available, was he... Qualified. So it's a good addition. What do you make to him so far? Will you so obviously watch the uh, ODIs against England? Camfer, he looks one for the future, certainly. <laughs> and he's got the wicket of Mark Adair. He'll enjoy that. That's a massive wicket in the game. Excellent piece of bowling. Just seems to have kept down a little bit, nipped back. And a huge blow for CIYMS. As Mark Adair departs for nine. See how YMS now 29 for two. Yeah, might have got a little inside edge. You, you, you'd mentioned there about Curtis Camfer. The one thing that I, 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 haven't, I haven't actually met him or spoken to him, but I hear wonderful things about just what he brings in terms of attitude, approach to the game, desire. And uh, at international level, I think very often that, that can be the difference between success and failure. You know, everybody's very talented. You, you can't play that level if, unless you are. So very often the difference between success and failure is what you bring mentally to the game. And I hear very good things about him. And certainly getting the runs that he did recently against England takes a huge degree of mental strength and, and, and that ability to work through those difficult situations. So long may that continue. He might have got one over Mark Adair today, but we very much hope that the two of them play pivotal roles going forward for the Irish side. Uh, we've got two scores. It's 25 for two on the graphics in front of us, but at the ground it's 29 for two, so uh, convinced that the score 29 for two is actually the right one. Market air bowled by Camfer for nine. Doherty the first to go. Caught it for a slip. Bowled by Tom Anders for one. 29 for two. We're in the sixth. And Nigel Jones 
the home captain at the crease facing Camphor for the first time and they put a slip in place as well and that ends the 6th over 29 for 2 Doherty and Adair the men out match it still there on 15 and Nigel Jones just face the one ball Captain Jones now at the crease has been a magnificent servant of the game up here, both for COMS and Civil Service North previously. And again, captain or coach now of the Leinster Lightning. And no better place to watch some of those guys who are vying for a place in the side from the middle now. But what you'll know with Nigel, he'll come hard at the ball. He will look to dominate. And he'll, he'll be seeking the rest of the initiative back from Dublin YM, who I think are probably just marginally ahead of the game at this stage. Yeah, Jones, plenty of experience, 38 years of age now. Played for Ireland, part of the 2011 World Cup squad. Didn't play in India. Should be a leg by, I'd say. Just waiting for the signal, yes. Rory Anders has been playing a little for the Munster Reds. And one, one of the you know one of the issues now facing Irish cricket is we have an awful lot of talent, particularly in the Leinster area, who we need to try and get into the, the system and, and, and play into regional cricket, into provincial cricket. And certainly, perhaps Rory Anders has an opportunity now uh, to impress the Lightning first team coach, Nigel Jones. Tries to catch it. And it bounced in front of the fielder. Yeah, it's a good stop, though. And that's what you'll see from, from Nigel. He plays very strong down the ground. Hits the ball very hard. Good half stop from Bobby Gamble there at the forward short, or sorry, short mid wicket. Just the awkwardness of having the AstroTurf pitch just in front of them there. Never easy. Oops. And it's shy at the stumps. Because match had slipped and they're going to run through from the overthrows. It was all going on out there. Match had tried to go off with a quick single. He was sent back. And a quick shot at the stumps by Harry Tector missed. But they were able to, in the end, run through for a single. Excellent running from Nigel Jones. Knew for the minute the ball hit the bat that he would beat the man at extra cover. And the graphic still says 29 for 2 at the ground. is 33 for 2. I think the ground scoreboard is correct. Match it on 16. No longer. Stays on 16. Tries the big hike to the leg side and is bold. And wickets are falling here quite readily and quite steadily for CIY. That's their third down. 33 for three now. And Matchett's gone for 16. Yeah, disappointed. John Matchett leaves the, leaves the crease. Perhaps had, you know, the, with the man out long on, he was targeting the leg side. It's a difficult pitch to play across the line on. And I think the challenge here for CI is this is when Jason van der Merwe would have come into his own. Uh, who's going to come out at number five? We're waiting to see. But this is most certainly where the, Jason van der Merwe do, does a lot of the dirty work. It's going to be Jason, uh, Jacob Muller now. And Jacob Muller's a big, big job to do here. A big job to do with his captain to, to help his side to get to some total that will put some pressure on Dublin YMCA. Jacob Mulder, a 25-year-old. Australian-born, plays for Ireland, made his T20 international debut against Hong Kong in 2016. Also has played for the Northern Knights in the Interprovincial Series. Well, Mulder has got plenty of experience. And a rebuilding job now with uh, Jones and Mulder with Matchett, Doherty and Adair back in the hutch. 
Jack Tector realising the, the need for Bobby Campbell now going into slip. Double YMC very much on the attack, taking all the attacking options. Live from Belmont and Belfast. This is the European Club playoff. Winners will go to La Manga next year to play in the 16 club competition. And that's the end of the seventh over. 33 for three. Quick word from you, Kyle. And Andrew Leonard would step in. Yeah, uh, certainly after seven overs. Dublin YM certainly on top. Another good over from Rory Anders. And Curtis Comfort to continue from the Strathern end. As we welcome Andrew Leonard into the comedy box for the first time today. Yeah, thanks, John. Thank you, Kyle. Great to be back with you. A little bit of a feeling of the morning after the night before just a touch but as with any Sunday match it's a bit of a slow start an inauspicious start for the hosts who arguably would have been favourites going into this game but YMCA right on top at the moment particularly having lost the toss and disconcertingly for COIMS Kyle the seamers are the ones doing the damage today and the pitch just isn't playing ball right now no, no, and, I've, and the thing with Nigel Jones, you can see from his body language there, Curtis Comfort again, that ball has just stayed down. You know, Nigel and Jacob Muller are going to have to show their experience here and realise that perhaps on a day like today, 120, you know, and it, you, they, they must post a total to put Dublin YMC under pressure. They mustn't panic at this stage. Every run's a prisoner. That's going to help get the account underway for Nigel Jones. The first boundary for him. So strong, straight down the ground. I think you've already alluded to that, Kyle. And I think that's the only way to play on a pitch that's keeping a little bit low. Play in the V, play to your strengths four runs. Yeah, 100%. You know, you, you saw the wicket of, of Matchett there. Uh, he had hit that beautiful six straight down the ground off Rory Anders. He just, once you go across the line, you're in danger. And Nigel Jones just showing how beautifully to play straight. And there, he's just approaching down to Curtis Camfer. And again, that's the way Jones will play. He'll look to play in the V. And. Uh, your length as a bowler to Nigel Jones is absolutely crucial. Once you float anything up into his arc, you know, the, the famous saying up here is in the arc, out of the park. And uh, Nigel just has already hit one straight boundary and, and that's uh, it's, a, it's a massive area of strength in his game. Yeah, I think for COIMS as well, they're just going to try and get this home crowd into the game. Good numbers coming in to support what will be the last club action of the season. And again, beats him outside the off stump. It's interesting, Mark Adair, after his dismissal, straight over to the commentary box here and, and trying to get a look on what happened to him. You can see that one there going away from Jones, but the dismissal of Mark Adair in Ducker coming back in, castling him. Yeah, look, this is your stereotypical low, slow seamer. You know, if you bowl stump to stump and set your field straight and bowl good lengths, it's very difficult to score. So, uh, you know, CIYMS have a bowling attack that would be akin to the, the maximising this as well, so they must stay in the game. Yeah, if you're just joining us, just give you a quick update. At the bottom of your screen, those scores are currently incorrect. Obviously not a dare and match it at the crease. Both have fallen bold. The score at the moment, 37 for 3, just as our technical team gets that sorted out. So we'll drop those off your screen and I'll keep you posted. Every ball, Kyle, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, 37 for 3 off 7. Uh, the bowling side slightly on top, no question of that. Really good stuff from Camper. Continues to attack the stumps. And for a man that we were giving a little bit of pressure to, saying he struggled in interprovincial and club cricket, he's had a really good finals weekend here. Yeah, he's played very well. You know, arguably took the the, the two keep wickets yesterday against Donamana. He's come in today and, and you know got rid of the very dangerous Mark Adair. He just keeps it simple, doesn't he? He's a strong bowler, very you know a strong shoulder bowler. Uh, busy, you know, through the crease, and we, we haven't seen the best one with the bat here. You know, obviously the pitches are slightly different, perhaps the ones that he's grown up on. It's going to take him a while to get used to them, but understandably, might take some time. But we hope he's going to be a big part of Irish cricket going forward. Four overs, two for eleven yesterday. Kyle outstanding from the new Irish international. Got to remember he's young in his career as well, but a huge asset and a huge piss, pick pick up even for the game here for both. YMCA, Leinster Lightning and Ireland just three appearances so far in Irish national colours that unique situation of making his debut for Ireland having not played a game on Irish soil wouldn't happen in your day Kyle would it? 
I'm not sure it would have, uh, <laughs> but you know the game has changed. You know, there's no question that we benefited massively from the introduction of Trent Johnson, Andre Botha, Jeremy Bray, Dave Langford Smith, et al. In, into the game and you know what that what that served to do it raised the bar for all the local guys we we had to we had to perform better if we were to get in the side um and you know i think it's it's something that's happening across the world now in all, in all test nations very good stuff this from Roy Anders just seems to be hitting a good length back of a length and you talk about those imports in, into the irish game they often end up integrated into Irish society, into the communities. You look at Nigel Jones, obviously originally from New Zealand, married now, living here with Irish kids. And that's, that's one of the great assets to Irish cricket. Absolutely, absolutely. Nicely bold again. And you know, the very pleasing thing for me is now that we're, we're actually starting to export our best players as well. You know, you look at Paul Sterling, Gareth Delaney, uh, Andrew Balburnie and just it's not the fact that they're playing in the T20 Blast you know they're actually outperform. you know the, 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 some of the leading performers in the T20 Blast so let's hope that we're starting to get a product here that we'll be proud to export to other countries around the world and, and take advantage of the franchise cricket that there, you know, that there now is Mulder finally off the mark just struggling a bit to rotate the strike here COIMS and not what the home faithful would have wanted by any stretch of the imagination. I'll give you a score update again. We're in the ninth over here. I think just the solitary delivery remaining in the ninth over. The score 38 for three. You can see the scoreboard in the background there. Jones on eight and, and Mulder on one. Would Mulder often bat this high for COMS? He has done. He has done. He's, he's come in at three at times in 2020 cricket for him. He's a dangerous player. Likes to play his shots. And, and I think what, what CI will look to do here, they, they had a very slow start in the semi-final against Donnamanna and they ended up posting 140. And I think if they do the same today, the, you know, I would imagine they would be thinking that 140 on the board would be a, a par and if not above par score in this pitch today. Just skews off the inside edge. Immediate call of yes from Nigel Jones. He's going to get through. Ball cannons into Mulder. Still solitary delivery left in the end of the ninth over. But... How pleased are YMCA going to be with the way their seamers are, are proving so effective? Yeah, they are. They are. You know, they, yeah, and actually, when you consider, there have probably been 10 extras in this total. Um, so their seamers in between those extras have pulled very well. They, they obviously know the pitch conditions. haven't played here yesterday. And uh, you know, I see Rory Anders bringing mid-off up. Just must ensure that he doesn't give any width to Jacob Muller. It's certainly an area that he'll target the, the mid-off extra cover region. Mulder uses his feet down the ground towards Simi Singh, just in front of our commentary position. That will close out the ninth over. The score now, 40 for three. Those graphics will be back to you in, in just a few balls' time. Score is catching up here. You can see just trying to put pace into the ball and a real sort of end-of-season wicket, isn't it? Yeah, you know, we're in the middle of September now. Um, I think in, in year, seasons gone by, the rugby post would be up here at SMS and the rugby teams would be playing. Um, so I think the groundsmen have done a I've done a, a fair job. There's no question of that. Most most grounds in the country have been put to bed by now. So it's one of the little things that we've had to deal with with COVID. And uh, yeah, the sun's shining. Let's enjoy it long, mate. Last though, it's going to be a long winter, Andrew. Spin for the first time today. Much to the joy and delight of the two commentators in the box. Andrew Leonard here with XR and International Kyle McCallan. And Kyle, the 17 year old Killian McDonald, who wasn't even supposed to be here this weekend didn't play in the semi-final, brought in because of the absence of Willem de Klerk, has now turned into the premier spinner for the club ahead of Simi Singh or Harry Tekcher, the two Irish internationals. Yeah, we had, we had a long debate yesterday as to who should get the Man of the Match award and Killian McDonald was, 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 was very much in consideration when, when he was brought on to bowl. You know, Simi Singh had, had, had gone the distance a little bit and he bowled his four overs and got two for 16, arguably wrestled the game back along with Curtis Camfer. Uh, a bit unfortunate for him that you know in a low scoring game I think Jack Tector 60 off 40 balls was always going to get it but he was very close to getting that man of the match you award you keep making that argument Kyle I just still can't agree with you it should have gone to the youngster should have gone to the union. spinner spinner's union <laughs> here comes McDonald through and around left arm and he's going to be worked into the leg side probably just for a single McDonald himself will do the feeling yeah it was an amazing game yesterday particularly because of Singh's spell he had two overs none for 27 and he's entering the veteran stage of his career, ends up with four overs, four for 30. Explain that to me, Kyle. 
sometimes bowling at the death in T20 cricket is a great opportunity to pick up a lot of wickets, isn't it? You know what I I'm, I'm, I like the way Killian McDonald bowls. For me, he's got he's got to be careful. He, he has to bowl the ball into the pitch to Nigel Jones. If he throws it up to jo- Jones, he'll take him downtown. There's no question of that. So his length here is going to be absolutely crucial because he does bowl it quite slowly. He's just got to make sure that he, he bowls that back of a length and just lets the pitch kill the ball and let the ball die in the wicket. Long off and long on out as protection for McDonald. Trying to do exactly what you said there, Kyle, bowling that little bit quicker through the air. Bowled a very similar pace yesterday to Jordan McGonagall, didn't he? And, and both left armers had huge success from that far end of the ground. Yeah, look, it's... It, 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 as I said, normally when you play at say, well, I mean, a good cricket wicket, there's a little bit of spin, seems a little, and the ball comes onto the bat. So uh, if you're a good bowler, you'll get plenty out of it. Good cricket from Jacob Muller. He's been busy since he's come to the crease, using his feet again. And as if by magic, just at the bottom of the screen there, you can see back up to date. Thank you to our scoring team today. That's Andrew Mooney, early match at the club scorers, and then on the MV play graphics, We've got Mary McElwee. Yeah. Really good work. And the YMCA fielding continues to impress. This time it's Bobby Gamble. Backward square leg saves a single. Yeah, I'm just having a look at Kelly McDonald's action here. Bowls nice and high. Um, just it seems to slide it in. I'd just be a wee bit cautious here if I was to see it. I wouldn't want to give too many easy singles away either. You're well on top. Got to build the pressure. Ooh. Half an appeal. Jones kept his back foot down. Would you like to see him to get a bit more action on the ball? If, if you think about the rev counter you see on Sky Sports, probably yeah. not the highest revolutions coming no, I think, through. I think if you look at him here, as he gets here, that's a lovely point of delivery. But for me, there's not enough shoulder, there's not enough body rotation in there at the very top, which is probably why he doesn't spin it as much. But he's young and that'll come. But the bottom line is, I was always taught you're a spin bowler first. You've got to spin it, spin it hard. Uh, but he does bowl with good accuracy and good control. Is it just me, or is there a tiny bit of George Dockerell in the action? Obviously, we've seen George change his run-up now as well. He's he's trying to get more revolutions on it, trying to turn it more, but a little bit reminiscent of a, a young George there, Dockerell. There certainly is. There certainly is. That's the end of the 10th over. You know, no damage done from a Dublin YMC, Dublin YMCA point of view. And the score is 44 for three at the halfway point. And one change will bring in another, because Simi Singh is going to come in as the in his new role, Kyle, as second spinner. <laughs> for YMCA might be Ireland's leading spinner but he's the second spinner for YMCA as club he's going to come in and bowl his off breaks and his leg breaks well that's that's the thing Simi Singh does got offer you know lots of options for his captain and you know, he's a very good bowler and what happened yesterday can happen to any bowler you know Gary McClintock got a hold of a few over deep mid wicket and uh, you know, the difference now is I think Simi's bowling at a, at a pivotal time with, with 10 overs to go Nigel Jones and Jacob Muller are going to have to take a chance and they're going to have to take a chance against, you know, Dublin YM's premier spinner. So, uh, you know, th- th- there's going to be something happen here, you know. Yeah, it was the 11th over of the innings yesterday. 19 runs, primarily from the bat of William McClintock. A few coming from the bat of his twin brother, Gary, as well. But it turned that clear currency All-Ireland T20 Cup final on its head. And I felt at that point, Donna Manor were ahead of the game before that remarkable collapse. Seven wickets falling for 10 runs. As YMCA closed out the 29 run win that Ryan Eagleson, of course, predicted. And he's going to start with an off break. Will we see as much mix as we did yesterday from Singh with the leg breaks, do you think? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sitting here, I'm curious because obviously, uh, knowing we have played a lot of cricket against Nigel Jones, Nigel wouldn't be a sweeper or a reverse sweeper of the ball. So having a look at the field that has been set, you know, he's a strong hitter down the ground. And, and see, I don't see how YMC are going to get him out with the field of set. Nobody, the mid, the, it's interesting they've got a mid-wicket now for Jacob Muller, but not for Nigel Jones. I would probably have it the other way around if it was me. Yeah, it's now a 5-4 leg side field. Three men in the deep, deep backward square leg, deep mid-wicket and long on. Again, just the ball dying in the pitch. No real mm-hmm. pace to work with for either of the batsmen. Yeah, absolutely. It's very difficult. You know, Semi's bowling a good length there. I have to say, I would just reiterate, I would probably like to see my midwicket across for, for Jacob and, and vice versa when Nigel Jones is on strike. But uh, semi, good tight start. Almost half a shout, a catch from behind the stones from JJ Cassidy. Singh starting significantly better than he did yesterday. Bowling flatter, it looks like to me. Something's going to happen this ball. Carl McCallan thinks that it's building up something to happen. 
YMCA coach Alan Lewis close by as well. And Kyle McCallan, as he so often is, he predicts a punched two into the deep. Was that what you were thinking, Kyle? Well, I just felt that there was going to be something, something going to happen. Um, uh, you can just feel the pressure building. Somebody's going to have to take a risk at some stage. You know, the run rate's only at 4.4. Um, still plenty of wickets in hand. And it just, y y you have a sense, don't you? I think as a bowler, you've got that sixth sense. A ball. And one of the things that Singh does so well, you can see he just holds in his gather as he comes up to bowl just to watch the batsman right to the very last point of delivery. Yeah, and I think as a, as a spinner, that little delay, uh, batters often have their rhythm and, their, and their, their little forward press, and that delay often just upsets the rhythm of the batsman as well. So certainly a, a ploy that myself and Andy White would have used back in the day just to make it as much of, of a difference as we could. Yeah, and a perfect demonstration of it there, holding in his gather, just holding that front arm out for a little bit longer. Um, it just upsets the batsman's timing, and as soon as you put that off, you're giving yourself that bit of an advantage for whether it be a miss hit down the ground. You just see the pause there, a perfect demonstration of it. And you might think, God, that's a poor delivery, he's dragged down, but he's actually watched the batsman right the way through. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing for me is it, it looks like a drag down wide outside off stump, but from, a, from Simi's point of view, he's probably thought, I've got a couple of dots in, he wants to get out of the over with a single. And on, on this pitch today, that short and wide ball outside off stump with the field that he's got set, it's going to be hard to hit a boundary. There's no pace to hit it backward of backward of point. So he's going to hit that man at deep cover or he's going to hit the man at long off. So it's actually a very clever, sensible piece of bowling. You know, throwing it up on leg stump brings the leg side boundary into play. So good, good, clever cricket from someone who's been there, done that. Yeah, absolutely. Simi Singh, the YMCA Leinster Lightning and Ireland man, he's turning into a pivotal bowler for Ireland. Probably hasn't got the runs he'd have liked in recent seasons it's funny he first came over as a batsman really and, and has evolved into a bowler yeah he's a good cricketer uh, I don't think we've seen the best of him playing for Ireland to be honest but curiously I'm just having a look at the scoreboard here and you know 19 for 1 at a run rate of under 4 and over 3.8 over in the last 5 overs so uh, Jack Tector would be delighted you know he, he's, he's firmly got uh, uh, the COO on my side where he wants them yeah, there's a feeling of an innings going nowhere are we going to see some fireworks now from Jones you almost felt it coming, you could. Tries to come down and smash him straight down the ground, almost probably looking to go over long off. Ends up coming off the inside edge, out to the man at deep mid-wicket for a single. Yeah, good from good from Kelly McDonald, but certainly that's what you're going to see from Nigel Jones. He's going to look to come down and look to hit the ball straight, straight back over the young bowler's head. Remarkably, in the 12th over, we've seen just four boundaries so far. Feels a bit more like an old-fashioned start to an ODI, not a T20 right now. And COIMS struggling to get going. Yeah, some, something's going to happen, Andrew. I have a feeling. Flatter this time, and again, that's the delivery that might look like a poor one on your screen, but clever bowling, not allowing it into the hitting arc of Jones. And all he can do is punch it to the man of cover for a dot ball. Absolutely. You know, it's important not to, not to give Nigel Jones that length that he get his hands under. Fuller this time, but too full to get under from Jones. He's happy to punch it into the offside for a single. The prior delivery, first time we saw a little bit of turn from McDonnell as well. Really good spell, this from the youngster. Yeah, he's settled in nicely. Last ball of a second over, he's, he's gone for eight. I think all in singles. So he's doing a fine job for a skipper. Mulder happy to use his feet again and for the first time we see something approaching an error in the field. This time off his own bowling for McDonnell. No real damage done, just a single. 12 overs gone now. Score 53 for three. CIYMS, Kyle, need to get going. Yeah, we're just getting to that stage where you're going to need to see a bit of acceleration. Um, certainly, this is a game where, where they're missing the, the, the experience and the excellence of Jason van der Merwe, strong hitter of the ball in the middle of the innings. Uh, David Miller's a man to look out for, a left-hand batter, swashbuck. He, he hits the ball a mile uh, when he gets in. We haven't seen a lot of him because of where he bats for CIYMS. He generally gets in with an over or two to go, but a very powerful hitter of the ball. And it's important now that, that, that Nigel, probably Nigel will give licence to Jacob here, say, I'm going to angle the things. You've, you've got licence to go. Yeah, just 48 deliveries remain in this first innings of the European Cricket League playoff match. 
And almost half a chance for Singh. It was chipped back with no great power. He dove full length to his right. I reckon he's just got his fingertips on that. And the catch has gone down. Yeah, it's an excellent it's an excellent effort from Singh. Good line. Just a leading edge from Jacob Muller. He's got fingertips to it. Reminiscent of a... He, he took a wonderful catch at the qualifiers against Namibia. Um, very, very similar. And a half chance. Yeah, spinners so often brilliant off their own bowling coil. I remember it. You, you were prone at one being smashed back at you. Wasn't really renowned for being a terribly <laughs> good fielder off my own bowling, Andrew, to be honest. <laughs> Try to be kind, Kyle. <laughs> Flatter and again, Jones just not getting the lengths that he wants to operate with. Really good. Tactically, this from the YMCA bowlers. They know how dangerous Jones can be down the ground over cow corner. He's not getting anything that he wants. Yeah, extra cover back on the edge of the ring. Bobby Gamble. And just bowling that ball flat and hard into the pitch, making it very difficult for Nigel Jones. Down the track again, and the series of dots and singles continues, and it shows no sign of being broken. And that is why you're hearing an eerie lull around the ground. There's quite a big home crowd now gathered around the ground at Belmontier. They are not getting any boundaries to work with, just four in the inning so far. And yet again, you can see, you know, Simi Singh is happy. He's got himself a dot. Previous ball, he doesn't want the, he doesn't want to give away a boundary option. So he just pulled that ball flat and hard into the pitch. Very difficult to get that away to the boundary. Singles aren't hurting YMCA. Again, hiding the ball away outside the off stump. Just another single to the total. Jones is such experience though, he's gonna know that if he can take this deep bat all the way through, he will be able to catch up. Yeah, you know, this is a good side. CI are a good side. I played recently against them and we needed Warringstown needed twenty six off ten overs with seven wickets in hand and, and we managed to get a dot off the last ball to win on fewer wickets lost. So they're a side who who who, who, who you know who are tough to beat and Nigel Jones gonna to wanna to post a score that gives his bowlers a chance. Off the leading edge this time, they will get through for a single, but super stuff from Singh. He's got none for nine. The score at the end of 13 is 58 for three. There are the options. Six bowlers used so far. Two spinners at the bottom, the rest all seamers, and with the exception of Mike O'Reilly, who just couldn't quite get his radar, the five wides proving a little costly as well. Outstanding figures for YMCA. Yeah, it's been an excellent bowling performance, and I think an indication of just how difficult the surface this is for the batsmen. Uh, all bowlers have, uh, and you look at Mike O'Reilly's figures, and you probably seven or eight of those runs off his bowling have come from extras and wides. So, um, you know, it's an indication that it's a tough surface to score on, turf oh, sorry, a tough surface to rotate the strike on. So, CI will be looking to clutch all those little positives, those little small things as we go forward. Down the track, and that's going to be a wicket for Killian McDonald. Mulder continued to try to use the feed. He's gone for unlucky 13. It absolutely died, got nowhere near the pitch of it. And JJ Cassidy's superb weekend with the gloves continues, whips off the bails. That's the fourth wicket. Yeah, we look at a replay here again. You'll just see the ball doesn't bounce whatsoever. So it's an excellent piece of wicket keeping. You know, he's taking that ball about a third of the way up the stumps. So it's important that you stay down and you come up with the bounce of the ball. So it's great work from JJ Cassidy. Big wicket. Is Jacob Muller's dangerous and that brings David Miller as I was talking about earlier a left hander and a fearsome hitter of the ball um, will look to target long on mid wicket and probably the first opportunity he's had this season to come in and, and, and play his game for 6 or 7 overs and I hope for the sake of the game that he gets going Yeah, David Miller like his South African namesake of course the power hitting left hander for the Proteus he's going to come to the crease but they're going to need some David Miller-esque fireworks to get this cup final, or in fact this European Cricket League playoff match moving. There's just a little bit of a feeling of after the Lord Mayor's show right now. Yeah, David Miller's nickname is Magic, and he's gonna to need to produce a little bit of magic today, I think, to bring a side into the game. Um, you know, Nigel Jones's body language, you can see it is tough out there. And sometimes on a tough pitch like this, you've just got to take your chance. You've got to play strong shots down the ground. And, and you know, Killian McDonald, I have to say, is, is, is proving a revelation again today. You know, he's bowled 13 balls, one for nine, no harm and no damage being done. 
and proven very difficult. And there is a little bit of George Docker, Docker Linham just sliding the ball in. The young George Docker way back in the 2009 World Cup. Sorry, 2011 World Cup in India. Well, on the, two, on the 2009 World 2020 where he made his debut out in the, in the West Indies. I think he was just 17 years of age. Had to get time off Gonzaga College. And the thing I love to see as a bespectacled brother just cleaning his glasses there. No great airs or graces about him. <laughs> probably, I don't even know where, the, there's probably no sweat coming off his head. He's not running with any big celebrations or anything. Just goes about his business. Ice cool, huge cricket lover. Killian McDonald. he's going to be so excited to be on the biggest stage there is here in Irish club cricket. He starts nicely. Yeah, and they're, what they're playing for, Kyle, is a place down in Lamanga, joining sides from all the way across Europe for the European Cricket League. How much would you have loved to have done that in your playing career? What do you mean in my playing career? You're talking as if my playing career is over, <laughs> Andre. I might actually get the chance to play on it next year. <laughs> Uh, for the big slog sweep oh, he could cross the line through to the keeper Cassidy yeah that's the shot that that, that I've seen David Miller he's dispatched me a few times playing that shot he's, he's, he's strong at it and I think he'll continue to play it but yeah look what an opportunity for local cricketers to get the, get away to La Manga and play against the best there is in Europe it's it's magnificent short ball down the leg side big appeal and given strangle down the leg side Cassidy continues his excellence with the gloves he's been nothing short of outstanding this weekend and if there's a man of the match contender, what about Cassidy? Look at that for a catch. What a brilliant take again. And very unlucky if you're the batsman. Uh, you know, it, it, that's your out-and-out -out strangle. Killian McDonald just into the pitch. A little bit of turn. Clear daylight between bat and pad. So umpire Neil, no, no, no doubt, no disputing. Up went the finger. And CIYMS in huge trouble here at 58 for five. Yeah, really good decision. A really clear, audible noise flicking off. The edge of Miller, he's going to go for a second ball duck. And everything is going YMCA's way. Yeah, that European Cricket League is going to be next year, Kyle. Obviously, let's hope that the travel restrictions that COVID has brought us will have calmed down by then, but tentatively scheduled in for the 30th of May to the 6th of June at the Lamanga Club for the European Cricket League 2021. Sides from Netherlands, Romania, Russia, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Denmark, Sweden, Norway... Finland, Scotland, Ireland and England. And the current winners, of course, from the ECL 2019, the VOC of Rotterdam. It's a T10 format. Again, some great skills. A lot more than just hit and giggle, isn't it? Yeah, look, it's, I'm just listening to that. It's hugely exciting, isn't it? You know, hugely exciting. T10 in La Manga, the sun will shine, good pitches. And at the minute, it's looking a little bit like it could be YMCA from Dublin. They're heading there to be the Irish representatives. And uh, it's, it, you know, Certainly when I was back playing and you played in the old, what we call the European Championships for Ireland, you know, it was your opportunity to pit your skills against the best there were in Europe. And for a lot of club cricketers, they're not going to get that. They wouldn't have got that oppor opportunity ordinarily. So it's a huge step forward for the game. And as James Cameron Dow takes guard, he's got a big job to do here for his team to try and give them any chance of getting there. Yeah, one left arm spinner bowling to another, James Cameron Dow, one of the many Irish internationals available and on show here on... The European Cricket League playoff, more known for his left arm spin, of course. Played a test match for Ireland against Afghanistan. Yeah, when he gets it right, James Cameron does a, a wonderful bowler, gets great shape on it. Reminds me a little bit of Regan West when he played. Just has a few struggles confidence-wise and technique-wise. There's his go-to shot, that little dab, the third man. And that, that familiar James Cameron Dow bark, that sort of yeah, 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 bark. And uh, he's got a big job to do here with his captain. Can um, bat, an effective batsman. Problem for, for CIYMS though is Nigel Jones hasn't faced a single ball in that over. Cameron Dow is going to steal the strike 14 gone, the score 59 for 5. Well, a bit of due for the moment to Kyle McCallan. I'll be joined by my colleague John Kenny. John, absolutely fantastic to have stayed overnight up in Belfast and, and be here for the playoff and to be bringing these pictures right the way across Europe. Yeah, it's great. Uh, this is a, a bonus, not just for ourselves, but obviously for the club cricket game in Ireland. It's the last club cricket match of the season so it's a bonus to be bringing you this live uh, not such a bonus I suppose for <laughs> the home side CIYMS who's struggling 59 for 5 at the end of 14 don't forget CI and their captain Nigel Jones decided to bat today he might be regretting that decision now yeah, Simi Singh's going to come around the wicket now to the left-handed Cameron Down he'll be licking his lips probably stick with off breaks only turning the ball away from the left-hander Right in the block hole, and uh, does the fielding off his own bowling. 
That's a good stop from Singh. And good captaincy from Tector as well, John, because he's got the slip in place. You can see there, Singh will stick to only the off breaks. In fact, after the way his leg breaks were punished by McClintock yesterday, it might be off breaks for the next little bit for him. Hence, going around the wicket. That's down the leg side. That should be a wide. And is. Yeah, it's a big prize on offer for this European club competition next year. Just edged around the corner. Brings a single to the new batsman at the crease, James Cameron Dow. Born in Cape Town, 30 years of age. Made his international debut for Ireland against Afghanistan out in India and also played in that test match out there as well. I just wonder how long Nigel Jones can afford to wait here. A little bit more than five overs to work with. Cameron Dow, probably the last real recognised top order batsman of any kind. A lot of pressure on Nigel Jones' shoulders. Uh, that's going to fall short of Harry Tector just in front of us. Cries of catch it, but he wasn't going to get that. We can see again, John, seeing hiding the ball away outside the off stump, not allowing Jones' natural hitting arc, and Jones dragging it the whole way across to the leg side. You can see the body language in Jones. He just for a moment thought he'd picked out Harry Tector, but falling well in front of the Irish international. Such a talented fielder, Harry Tector. That catch yesterday, John, as good as I've seen. Oh, incredible. Incredible down at the far end of the ground. It was uh, amazing to watch that catch. And actually, well, let's let this ball go through from Singh. And misfield from Singh, and they're going to shout the stumps. And they get home safely. A direct hit would have been in trouble there, I think. But uh, they have to scramble the singles when they can. Look at that run rate, John. Just 4.3 and over. Not, not what you're accustomed to seeing in a T20 at all. And the pitch is, no doubt, at end of season. It's not going to be a run fest, but it's nowhere near as bad as the COMS have made it look. And it's the YMCA bowlers that are absolutely outstanding. The fact their seamers exerted such control for the spinners to now come in and do what they're doing. Jones looks a frustrated figure out there. It was uh, interesting to watch William McClintock yesterday, the skipper of Donna When he missed out, he would slap his pads hard with the bat and it would resonate around the ground. Jones a little more circumspect, but he certainly is getting a little bogged down now, Jones. He's on 15 of 22 deliveries. A huge turn there, John. That, that's the, the, the sharp turning off break from Singh. And what he does very cleverly, even with it, within his off breaks, he varies them up, some of them skidding on. That one turning sharply. Look at Jones's stance now. He's standing in front of off stump. Try and cut that away, and that's what he does. But it'll only be a single because there's a man fielding on the boundary. And they're running out of overs. What Jones is trying to do there, John, is he's trying to position himself significantly outside his off stump to force Singh to bowl into his hitting arc. What does Simi Singh do? He hides it away, out by the wide line. All Jones can do is punch it into the offside for a single. Hugely frustrating for Jones. Hasn't been a boundary, John, since the eighth over. And that's why they're on 64 for five. Oh, 15 overs, so five to go. And the two batsmen out there. Jones, the captain, and James Cameron Dow get together for a chat in the middle about what they can do for these last five overs. Five down. Chris Hardy, the first one to go. Caught a first slip. Bowled by Tom Anders. And Mark Adair lasted for just five runs before he's bowled by Curtis Camfer. John matched the opener. Went on to 16 before he was bowled by Rory Anders. The score on 33. And Jacob Mulder, stumped by Cassidy, has had an outstanding couple of days here in Belmont. Bowled by McDonald, Killian McDonald, a 17-year-old, who's continuing now from the Strathairn end. Jones punches that into the leg side. He should get two there and run it through. And the final wicket to fall was David Miller, who was stumped by Cassidy around his legs off the body. And McDonald, he's taken two for, and that was at 58 for five. And now they're on to 64 for five in the 16th. You'd have to think Jones is going to target McDonnell here. And you can see him down the track, gets to the pitch of it, but just couldn't get the elevation. Lost his shape a bit there, Nigel Jones. 
looking straight. That's high in the air, and that's going to go clear the field as well, and uh, something for the home supporters to cheer. And it's a nice thump down the ground by Jones, and a welcome maximum. You felt this was the over he was going to target down the track, gets to the pitch of it this time, holds his shape much better, doesn't try to overhit it, and with the pair of Nigel Jones, possesses straight as a die, clears the handy energy boards in the outfield. Glorious shot, second six of the innings. Moves on to 24. Should be a wide down the leg side. For the first time in two days, John, pressure on the 17 year old. He bowled with such control yesterday, two for 16. Well, he shouldn't panic really, should he? I mean, it was just one hit because he bowled well up to this point. He's taken two wickets as well. So just lost his line and length in that previous delivery. Big flatter this time, but that's pulled away. And that's going to go for four. And these are welcome runs for CIYMS. Yeah, brilliant batting. He's come down the track, punished him down the ground for six. This time, McDonald tries to dart it in, scared of giving Jones the elevation. He rocks onto the back foot, pulls it into the deep, dissects the two men. A deep backward square leg and a sort of wide deep mid-wicket. Two boundaries in the over. Welcome boundaries for COIMS. Well, McDonald's young. He's only a teenager. He'll have to find out as he goes through his cricketing career not to panic. But he's, he seemed to panic with the last two deliveries when... He was hit over his head by the home captain. Back to doing what you do. That's better. Well, it's straight down the leg side. That's the second wide of this over. So it's expensive. 78 for five now. And we're only midway through the 16th over. And that's high in the air again. I don't think he's got that full. There's a, wick, there's a fielder down there. Can he keep it in? No, he can't. Well, that hung in the air for an awful long time. And that's the second maximum for Jones in this over. I thought the fielder on the far end was going to do something about that, but couldn't keep it in play. Yeah, it was Harry Tector again, right on the edge. And he just tried his best to keep it in, but he was trying to jump from inside the rope, of course. And how quickly a T20 can change. Nigel Jones is turning this European Cricket League playoff in just a course of four balls. Most expensive over the playoff so far. That's good batting. Gets his maximum and then just turns one around the corner for a single. And McDonald, who's taken two wickets, will be just hoping that this over ends quickly. 21 runs already from this over. Most expensive of the playoff by a distance, as I just said, John. And brilliant bat in from Jones down the ground, showing off his power. He just felt he was going to target Killian McDonald. And would Jack Tector be taking back his decision to stick with the young spinner now if he could? Well, what they need to do now is to keep Dow and Jones out there, left right combination, just move the fielders around as well and just create that confusion if they can. Keep the scoreboard ticking over. Get as many runs as they can here. 85 for five. Last ball of the 16th over. Over the wicket comes McDonald. And 22 runs accrue from that over. And CIY will be very happy with that, Andrew. And uh, it actually pushes them towards some kind of respectability. Yeah, absolutely. And that run rate going above five for the first time and you might think again in the T20 that's not where you want to be at but they're within shooting distance now of a run of ball getting up towards 120, 130 remember in the semi-final where they came up just short to Donovan on DLS they made 141 it was 141 for seven that day but a lot of those runs came in the latter half of the innings so Jones is going to feel confident with 24 deliveries to work with he's moved to 35 off 28 all of a sudden eyeing up north of 120 for the first time. Yeah, Kitty and McDonald's figures, four overs, no maidens, two for 32, and you consider, consider, conceded 22 runs in that previous over. And was in line, well, certainly in the run for man of the match yesterday, the 17-year-old spinner, who took two for 16 yesterday. He fairly got thumped in the last over, and he lost his line of length as well. The Simi Singh continues as the sun bursts through here at Belmont. Four overs to go, just 3.5. Indeed, as Singh continues around the wicket to 
the left-handed Cameron Dow. Cameron Dow just not doing what he's supposed to, John. He's got to get Nigel Jones on to strike here. Big time. But that's a stock and trade shot, really, isn't it? Just trying to run the ball down to uh, third man. But we've got a short third man in there, so it prevented the single. 86 for five. Well, that's at least one wide. Definitely two, I'd say. Or is it a leg by? What's the signal here? It's a by. And James Cameron Day was staring back at the umpire because he can't believe this hasn't been signalled wide. And the reason it's not signalled wide, even though it's down the leg side, he has moved significantly. Well, I'm trying to find a reason. Yeah, why I can't find a reason wide, for that really. not being a wide. I'm sorry. That, yeah, I know he moved down there, but it was so wide. Yeah, anyway. I, I think Singh's got away with the one there, John. Think just so. being frank. Back over the wicket for Singh to Jones. That's definitely a wide. Yeah, but interestingly, if you look at where Jones is setting up in his stance, he's not just standing now on middle stump or off stump, he's standing outside off stump. So Singh is saying, I've got to be given more leeway, that much leeway from the stance outside the, the wide guideline on the off stump. So really interesting mind games here from Nigel Jones. Look at where he's setting up now, John. Wow. Even further outside the off stump. You don't see this too often. Take a screenshot at home. I broke. Ball the leg break and do it around the legs, perhaps. He doesn't do that. He rolls it in flat. And drag from off to on for a single. It is mind games out there, isn't it? It's interesting to watch. And not just exposing his leg stump, John, but even his middle stump. That's as extravagant a batting stance or position as you'll ever see. Sometimes see the likes of Steve Smith come and bat on middle or off stump. You might see just the tail of the leg stump well, exposed. Smith's an enigma, really, though, isn't he? You know, um, his stance is something to behold. Singh going back around the wicket now. Cameron out just tries to step away as the ball is bowled around his legs. They're going to get one anyway. They won't get two. Curtis Camfer has got a good arm. Yeah, good work in the deep from Curtis Camfer. YMCA fielding. Nothing short of outstanding. I called it to an international level, John, yesterday, and they've really kept that up throughout both the Clear Currency All Ireland T20 Cup final. Look at Jones now. You can see not just the middle stump, but also the leg stump, and Simi Singh is wondering what to do. He's just got one ball to get through. I'd imagine, John, he's going to try hide this well outside the off stump again around that wide line. Oop. Thick outside edge, and Jones wanted a run, but he was sent back. And that ends the 17th over. I don't think that's good cricket from James Cameron Dow. You've got to run through for the single there, even if you end up potentially getting run out, because you've got to get Jones on strike. The call, he should have been backing up further. The call should have been an immediate yes. Put your wicket on the line for your skipper. And he hasn't done that. Three overs to go. 90 for five. Jones unbeaten on 36. Cameron Dow trying to back up a skipper on five. Uh, 120, I'd say from here, would be a, a reasonable score. And it's asking a lot to get 10 runs and over, but they did get 22 off the last of Killian McDonald's spell. Curtis Comfer is back on. Yeah, superb in the final yesterday and brilliant with the ball today again getting that big wicket of Mark Adair Mark Adair remember John playing most likely as a batsman only today ongoing back issues means he'll be unable to bowl that's a big blow for COIMS it is certain he is uh, one for six and it's two over so far Camfer that's the scorecard match it Doherty Adair all gone along with Mulder and Miller Jones calls him through quickly. It's gone to the bowler's end, and Cameron Dow makes it. Again, he was just a little bit back on his heels there. The ball went straight to the fielder out there, uh, Robert Gamble, who's got a very good arm on him. But you're right, I think that uh, Cameron Dow needs to keep the scoreboard ticking over and run when he can and get his captain back on strike. Yeah, only 17 deliveries left for Jones to work with now. And the way Camfer is bowled, both yesterday and today, proving incredibly difficult to get away to the boundary. 
You'd imagine Jones will again look to go straight. Maybe trying to get down towards the pitch of the ball and that's brought about the change in the field with both long off and long on going back. And very nearly a no ball. Mikey O'Reilly having to come up into the circle to ensure that the four fielders are in the circle. So both third man and fine leg in the circle jump. That's a good stop. Jack Tector showing his captaincy. Good stop. Prevents the run. Perhaps they could have run through for a single, but Jones wants to stay on strike. He's on 38, not out. That's pumped into the offside. Good stop down there as well from Harry Tector. Prevents the boundary, and they run through for two. Yeah, outstanding again in the deep, saving a certain two runs. Just wondering, is that Tim Tech? It is Tim yeah. Tech, my apologies. <laughs> they all look pretty similar. They are very similar to three. <laughs> Almost triplets and outstanding fielders, the three of them. And he's only 17 years of age, Tim Tector. And the two Tector boys are down deep on the boundary. And it's pumped down the ground again to Tim Tector. This time an easy to er take. And just a single to Jones. And not finding the boundaries at CIYMS1. You can see where Jones is trying to go, but Curtis Camford just gets it full enough to not allow any elevation from Jones. And the singles are what YMCA will be happy with at the moment. They take 14 more of them. CIYMS have to find a way to get up north of 120, make this chase more than run a ball, bring their spinners into the game. We're going to see a lot of spin from them in the second innings. And you mentioned Mark Adair probably won't bowl, so... That's going to be a big loss from their point of view. Cameron Dow waits as Camfer comes into bowl now from the far end. Now the leg stump and worked away. And to the man. Deep backward square, just a single. Yeah, superb with the ball, Camfer. Again, bowling from the correct end, the far end of the ground. The angle and the slope of the pitch aiding his natural style to bring the ball into the right-handers, away from the left-handers. Looks a very talented athlete. Decision time for Jones. Does he take a single or go for the big hit? I'm going to guess the single anyway. To end that, the 18th over, 96 for 5. So that's a look at the bowling figures, John, and it's going to be interesting to see, will it be Tom Anders with one and Rory Anders with one, or probably Curtis Camfer? Obviously he won't go back to Mikey O'Reilly, you wouldn't have thought. So yeah, poor old Rory is Anders is coming back on to bowl his fourth and final over. Poor old Tom Anders might end up with just the two overs, one maiden, one for three. Bit harsh, <laughs> <laughs> bit harsh, all right. So just the two overs remaining then. And a lot riding on Nigel Jones now. 40 not out from 34 deliveries. Uh, 12 to go as the sun again breaks through here at Belmont. That's just single down to Harry Tector. Feeling it long on. I think what Jack Tector is going to be so pleased with is the way his bowlers have bowled to the fields that he has set with them. You see their protection down the ground in the hitting arcs of Jones. And all Jones can do is punch it powerfully down towards Harry Tector. But all of the bowlers doing exactly what Jack Tector will have wanted. Just keeping that run rate hovering around the five and over. Prizes, a place in the European Cricket League finals next May in La Manga for the winner of today's contest. The 2019 winners of the 220 National Cup, CLYMS, who won the toss and batter today against the 2020 champions, YMCA, the 
2020 version of the European League cancelled for this year and hopefully we'll go ahead next year with those 16 teams doubling the amount of teams that played in the first which was won by Rotterdam when they had eight club sides uh, well that's a wide and poor old Rory uh, slips in his bowling action and one more to the total looking resplendent of course again in his pink headband I'm not going to talk as much about the hairstyle John but a man with great style just tumbling through acrobatically yeah, and I think it has, has to be said, huge credit to Cricket Ireland for putting on today's game. Uh, they had a bit of a summit meeting to work out whether or not do we send CSNI or do we send this year's winners. So why not let them play out as they have today to work out who's going to go to La Manga. Uh, I think Jones wanted the single there, but he was sent back. One yeah. short of three figures. Need a lot more. That's bold. Beautiful from Rory Anders. Castling Nigel Jones, getting the big wicket. Jones had no option really but to try and start to go for the maximums. He was looking to hammer it into the leg side and it just clipped the top of the off bail. Jones ends up falling for 41 from 37 deliveries. Really good from Rory Anders. Just like Camfer, angling it into the right-handers. Making it difficult. The batsman misses, the bowler hits. Really good stuff from YMCA. Couple of maximums for Nigel Jones in his 41 as he trudges off. It's Alan Coulter, who's in as the incoming batsman. In for Jason van der Merwe, who injured himself in the warm-up. Has played for Northern Knights. And he comes in with his team in, in trouble, really. 99 for 6. Yeah, he'll have his job to do with the ball later Alan Coulter but we'll see him with the bat and he's beaten immediately by Anders outside the off stump two left handers now operating in tandem this CIYMS innings outside of that solitary over off the left arm spin of Killian McDonnell where Jones plundered him for three boundaries it's just never got going Jim no just that one over you mentioned 22 runs coming from it but it's been excellent bowling fine fielding as well from CI. Fuller delivery this time. Punch down the ground. It's going to pick up at least a single. They're going to go back for the second now and test the arm of Curtis Coulter. And that's great running. Good cricket all round there. Great throw in from Curtis Camfer into Cassidy who whipped off the bails. But the runner got home and they got through for two welcome runs to take them past three figures for the first time. It's 101 for six. Yeah, the 100 comes up off the final ball of the penultimate over. Again, you're just seeing a demonstration of just how good this YMCA fielding is. Nothing short of outstanding. Backed up so brilliantly by JJ Cassidy with the gloves on. The strides he'd made, he has made in his game in the last two or three seasons since he's come into the first team at YMCA. It's been phenomenal, really. He's got a lot fitter, a lot more athletic. Keepers play such an important role in the white ball version of the game. Often undervalued. Yeah, he's stumping and caught behind today so far, but it's his all-round fielding that's been most impressive. So last over. That's a wide. Yeah, you can see what Camfer's trying to do. He's trying to get it wide outside the off stump, right around that guideline, not allowing the left-handers to hit the ball down the ground or into the leg side. He's bowling with a 5-4 offside field. But interestingly, interestingly for me, John, third man is in the circle, so if can skew off the outside edge, could end up getting four. Swing and a miss. 
Not a lot of foot movement from James Cameron Dow. Yeah, but look at how low that has kept, John, and that's that's the perfect example and demonstration of why run scoring has proved so difficult. No consistent bounce really to work with the ball just dying into the wicket. Five balls to go then. Dow steps across his stumps and there's a miss hit. And another dot ball. Yeah, one of the things I've been a little disappointed with from COIMS's perspective as well, just the, the, the intensity and intent in the running between the wickets as well. The number of dot balls they've chewed up throughout this innings has left them 20, 30 short of where they should, should or could be. Uh, it's flipped in the air. And it's going to go up and over the fielder's head. Killian McDonald down there. Uh, just couldn't quite pick it up. It went over his head and he actually had a chance to catch it kind of Curtis Camfer style from yesterday. But it just went beyond his grasp. Yeah, he's kind of dizzied himself underneath the catch. Ended up getting a decent chance to get two hands at it. But he sprawls through to save the boundary. So two more runs to the total. Good innovation from Cameron Dow. The reverse scoop shot. Just taking too much of an aerial route to find its way to the boundary. And he pulls out. And I just wonder, did he pull out there, John? Because for the first time we've seen some rather healthy backing up. Yeah. Yeah, he could have whipped the bales off, but it wouldn't be very sportsmanlike. Anyway, it's maybe just a warning to the man backing up, Alan Coulter. And he'd gone too far out outside of his crease. Be anxious to get up the other end. And that's hammered down the ground. There is a fielder down there. There's two Tecta boys working in tandem. Oh, and it doesn't quite come into Cassidy's hands as he would have liked. Kept a little low as it came in from the outfield and he couldn't scoop it and take off the bales. Yeah, that's an absolute nightmare for the keeper, that sort of half volley length that you don't want. It was one of the two Tector boys. It's so bright and glaring, difficult to pick up which one. I think it's I think that's I think Harry, Harry Tector. Yeah. yeah, the throw comes in and as you say, just that nightmare for a keeper. You never want it on the half volley, so no real chance for JJ Cassidy to whip the bales off. I think Cameron Day might have just got home anyway. More athletic work in the field from the trio of Tectors. Yeah, he's a big lad. The 30-year-old James Cameron does, so it takes uh, just a few strides to get from one end to the other, but he had to take off. He's moved on to 12. Two balls to go in the CIYMS innings. And Dow uh, just steps outside his crease and pumps it down the ground. Should come back for the second. Should make it home easy. And does so, even though it's a good arm again from Tector down, uh, fielding it uh, long off. Yeah, these these tectors are just sensational to watch in the field. Look at the look at the pace he makes across to his right, sprinting full pace, picks it up cleanly, two hands, probably about a sixty-five yard throw, flat over the top, one bounce. Cassidy whips off the bales. He's only just home. Amazing, amazing stuff. International player. T twenty for Ireland has played twenty of those and made his ODI debut. Harry Tector against England in that remarkable series in Southampton during the summer. Yeah, and I love that photo with, with Kevin O'Brien and, and Harry walking off with Kevin having hit the winning runs, the sheer joy, elation, but the pressure that Harry Tector in just his third ODI walked out under, needing more than a run of ball against the world champions, it's going to stand him in great stead. Absolutely. Uh, there was talk that Kevin O'Brien should perhaps have come out ahead of Harry Tector, but Andy Balberni, the Irish captain, his stated policy is to get his team together for future World Cup and qualifying and T20s hopefully the finals be on next year last ball of the innings then down the ground they're going to come back for the second run should make it home easily enough you would have thought but uh, they throw to the wicket keeper's end and they get through for two runs to take the total to 110 for six at the end of 20 overs having won the toss and decided to bat yeah, good work from Cameron Dow, just a trio of twos to finish out the innings to give a little bit of late joy and a touch of momentum to CIYMS. That throw coming in from Harry Tector, just as we were talking up his fielding, a little bit errant, and it meant that James Cameron Dow, despite not turning overly quickly, did get back for two. Just looks to be struggling a little bit to me, John. I'm sure he'll still be able to get through his four overs of left arm spin. So what it means at the halfway stage... CIYMS, what looks like a slightly under par, 110 for six. 
Uh, Chris Doherty was the first one to go for a single with the score on three. Mark Adair then joined. And Adair made five. And the score on 29, the second wicket down. Uh, third wicket, the opener match it. Went for 16, ball by Anders. Fourth wicket down was Jacob Mulder. Stumped by Cassidy, bowled by Mike Donald. One of two wickets for the 17-year-old at the score on 58. And no addition to the scores. David Miller was caught around his legs off the bowling McDonald by Cassidy. 58 for five. And the last wicket to fall was Nigel Jones, the captain. He went for 41. With the score on 99 at the end of the uh, innings then. Having won the toss and decided to bat as I say, 110 for six. Yeah, there's the bowling figures. Six bowlers used and really good stuff from well, certainly five of the six of them. Mikey O'Reilly might want his spell again. Two overs, number 17 for him. But Tom Anders, superb, one for three. And the pick of the bowlers for me, Rory Anders. The ex Ireland under 19 and Leinster Lightning player, two for 18. Really good use of his right arm medium fast. And great to see him coming back to something approaching his full form. And just a wee bit of breaking news here, John before we let you go and send us off to the break. I see Mark Adair marking out his run-up. Maybe he's feeling like that back is feeling good and we might just see the Irish international opening bowler being used by COIMS. Yeah, they'll need him, I think. So COIMS winning the toss and deciding to bat on a sunny afternoon here in Belfast against YMCA. The winning score will be Nelson, 111 required after CIYMS made 110 for six highest scorer Nigel Jones the captain on 41 so we're going to take a short break and we'll be back with the YMCA reply very shortly as the world calls for a timeout, some of us find ways to cheer ourselves on the boundaries have been drawn but the thrill of the chase keeps us going the rush of blood to the head the adrenaline, that's what's worth fighting for. So bring on all the challenges, because the whistle to end was never blown. And we're in it to play the long game, the game that lives on.
As the world calls for a time out, some of us find ways to cheer ourselves on. The boundaries have been drawn, but the thrill of the chase keeps us going. The rush of blood to the head, the adrenaline, that's what's worth fighting for. So bring on all the challenges, because the whistle to end was never blown. And we're in it to play the long game, the game that lives on.
Good afternoon and welcome back to this European Cricket League playoff between hosts CIYMS and YMCA Cricket Club. The winners yesterday of the Clear Currency All Ireland T20 Cup. A thrilling victory over Donna Manna from the North West. Andrew Leonard here, joined by Kyle McCallan, the ex Ireland international all rounder. Kyle, COMS significantly under par or right in the game? I wouldn't say they're significantly under par. I think they're probably just under par. Um, you know, pitch has been very difficult for, for, for scoring on, both yesterday and today. I do think 110 is probably just below par. 130 is probably about par. 120, I think you're still very much in the game. And a lot will depend here on, on, on the new ball spell with Alan Coulter and Mark Adair, uh, Nigel Jones, you know, you have Jacob Mulder, you have Jim, James Cameron Dow and, and, and Trevor Britton or Ted Britton. Uh, you know, like, it's a strong bowling side, this CIYMS side, and they're a very difficult side to beat. So I think there's cricket to be played. I think YMCA are probably just slight favourites at the moment, but as, we, as we've seen throughout the course of the weekend so far, yeah, there'll be twists and turns, no doubt. Strange things happen and in what is essentially a cup final, really. This European Cricket League playoff runs on the board are going to come into play as well, even though there's just 110 of them for CIYMS. It's a glorious day, blessed with an Indian summer to close out what's been the most extraordinary of years. And it's the 2019 All-Ireland Champions in the T20 format, CIYMS, against the 2020 winners just yesterday, YMCA. We're duking it out for a spot in La Manga next year. Alan Coulter to get things underway and starts with a really full delivery just off the inside edge of Jack Tector's bat thuds into the pad. That's why there's no appeal. Not just the spin options that are going to be key, Kyle, but the seamers as well. Coulter, Nigel Jones, and are we going to see Mark Adair ball? Well, it certainly looks like it, if you, if you judge by the warm-up. Uh, Mark has been very lively. Alan Coulter's been a huge miss for, for, for say, YMS for the last few weeks. Suffered a bit of a, a knee injury. Uh, and it's a huge lift to his side to see him out here opening the bowling today. Yeah, and what we've seen throughout the weekend on this wicket, none of the batsmen who have scored have found scoring earlier in their innings easy. Top scorer yesterday, Jack Tector, who's on strike currently. The captain for Donna William McClintock. Today, for the captain again, <laughs> Nigel Jones for COMS. They've all got their run scoring going later in their innings. Yeah, and speaking with Alan Lewis in between innings, I think he feels they must take advantage of the top six overs in the power play. And there's going to be a wicket. Goes down, Kyle. Just past the diving outstretched effort. It immediately looked like it should have been a catching opportunity. I'm surprised Jack Tector actually allowed the delivery to be bold because yes. there's people walking across the side screen. It was just one of those bits of cricket. It all happened in slow motion. The end result's going to be a single, but the catch goes down. Yeah, absolutely. I was, I was, you know, there was, there was half a dozen guys just d d dandering past the side screen, and and Jack obviously was oblivious to it. So that's a half chance. I think CIYMS are going to have to take all those half chances. Dropped, I think, by Rajavelu there, Kartik Rajavelu at midwicket. Just a little surprise. We didn't see mid on come in, and, and and always easier coming towards the ball than coming sideways towards it. No real communication in the field from CIYMS saying it throughout the weekend the, the, the gulf in fielding standards between the Leinster side YMCA and, and the two northern sides now display is going to be palpable well I, I think this is a good feeling side you'll, you'll, you'll see why uh, or see why I'm or it will be a will be a good feeling side um, so but feeling is going to be a, a very important aspect of the game you know that it's important to see how fielders back up what is a very strong bowling attack Down the track, hit into the offside. That's, that's one of the two fielders allowed outside the circle. Deep extra cover. And Kyle, you're going to have to describe the second fielder outside the circle. A very, very wide fine leg. Yeah, this is a tactic often used by Nigel Jones. He's bowling pretty much the, the 6-3 uh, offside field. Very often I've been known to bowl the 7-2 offside field when he's bowling himself. And basically inviting the batter if you want the lap or if you want to bring in the fine leg. You're going to have to take a bit of a risk in the top six. So... Yeah, it, it demands that Alan Coulter pulls a very good line. I mean, good to see slip in place as well. Really good start from Coulter. Just two runs coming from the first over. And you're going to need about five and a half and over. That required run rate will creep up pretty quickly if 
the top balls come into things. But with 19 overs to go, 109 more to win. Tell us a bit about Alan Coulter. He's played a bit for the Knights, a talented cricketer. Yeah, in, in the early days of his career, he would have been very wayward, struggled a lot with extras. But over the last five or six years, he's probably been a leading performer in the NCU in terms of seam bowling. Bowls with great control, swings the ball away, and, and often gets very important early early wickets with the new ball for, for, for Nigel Jones. And he forms a form, you know, himself and, and, and Mark Adair a pretty formidable opening bowling partnership. Yeah, and for all COIMS fans, both here at the ground... Northern cricket fans, even Irish cricket fans in general, they're going to be pleased by the sight of Mark Adair back with the ball in hand. He played for the Northern Knights during the week as a batsman only. Questionable moustache on display, Andrew, do you agree? Not a fan of his general look, actually, at all today. <laughs> uh, both a little bit of dye in the hair and the rather interesting moustache, let's say. But here he comes from the pavilion end. Mark Adair is a man who just has a knack of making things happen. Known by his nickname of Sparky, he loves the big stage, Kyle. Yes, he does. He's a he's a he's a fa he's a fabulous player, hugely talented player. Has struggled, unfortunately, a little bit with injuries, but has uh, thankfully kept himself fit for the majority of the season. It'd be a huge lift to Nigel Jones, particularly in the light that he lost Jason van der Merwe before the play to know that Mark Adair's been able to step up and take a new ball. I'm telling you, now, the, the, 110. There, there's cricket to be played here today. Beauty. Big appeal. In fact, it's the first wicket. And Adair, as he so often does, pumps his wrists and his fists in delight. Through to the keeper. Just a fine outside edge. Tector knew immediately. Adair knew. And the finger goes up. Mark Adair simply does it again. Yep. He has that ability to, to take wickets with a new ball. He's, he's always in the game. Jack Tector looks very disappointed. like He felt like he didn't get anything on that ball. But there was no, no doubting. Chris Doherty, uh, Nigel Jones, very pleased with that and the early breakthrough that CIYMS needed. Well, I think interestingly, you just saw from that replay there, I don't think Nigel Jones was convinced by any stretch. I didn't hear an audible noise. All that matters is that the appeal was given out immediately. And Jack Tector, the man of the match yesterday in the clear currency, All-Ireland T20 final, is gone. And he's going to be replaced by his brother Harry at number three. Mark Adair, what is it about him? He's just got this golden arm quality. Yeah, look, he just bowls terrific deliveries. You know, when you see some of the wickets that he's picked up in the national game and the international team, he has the ability to get good players out. And, and, he's, and he's done that already. So, you know, look, I'm telling you, 110, I think, you know, Nigel Jones, that little brief sort of counter-attack off Kelly McDonald has brought has brought CYMS up, up to a total that's not far off par. And another couple of quick wickets here and, and Dublin YMC will be very much under pressure. Yeah, you can see what the teams are playing for. The passion there and that celebration from Adair was... Really tangible. The winners today will go out to Lamanga next year on the 30th of May to represent the island of Ireland in the European Cricket League. What a prize at stake. It's the 2019 winners against the 2020 winners. And Mark Adair bowling to his Irish international colleague, Harry Tector. And not too happy that he's going to have to run in and do it all over again. Harry Tector, just happy to make him wait. Yeah, Mark, Mark, you know, fast bowlers don't like being interrupted, do they? You know, they're very grumpy generally whenever the batsman steps away. You always think to yourself, the next one's going to be up around my ears here, just out of bad temper. But I think on this pitch, just good areas, let the ball nibble away, bring your slip and, and the fielders behind the wicket into the game. Down the leg side, this time just thudding into the pad of Harry Tector. That's the reason we won't see wide signalled. Just probably looking for that. Wicked ball, trying to target the stumps here or there. Yeah, absolutely. Good work from Chris Doherty behind the stumps. It's not an easy, you know, we've talked about how difficult the pitch it is to bat on. You know, it's not easy for the wicket keeper standing back. The ball's not carrying through. So good tidy work from Chris Doherty. Yeah, good tight stuff. And again, you can see that third man in the circle because it's the exact same field replicated from the far end, 6-3 offside field. Good tactics here from, from Nigel Jones. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a, a field that Nigel's confident in setting. You know, he likes to defend one side of the pitch and, uh, and, and make the batters take the risk. Yeah. Driven into the offside by Tector, can't pierce the infield. And CCIYMS with that early breakthrough, just feeling like their 
They're starting to believe that they're in this game, they're in this final. Talk to us about Mark Adair's action. It's a funny little sort of hop and skip into the into the bound and gather. Yeah, you know, he's, he's a good athlete. He just has a, a, an excellent wrist position. You know, he, he generally just, you know, he does just skip in towards the stumps. And if you, if you move in towards the stumps, your point of release, you've only got to move the ball very little, you know, with a half, half width of a bat and you're in the game. Beauty, absolutely brilliant from Adair. He's celebrating again. He's Castle Dector. He's dismissed the captain, Jack, and he's followed up by clean bowling. His Irish international teammate, Harry Tector, COIMS, two early breakthroughs, Kyle. Yeah, brilliant piece of bowling. A nip backer from Mark Adair. Harry Tector looking to take the aggressive option and go over the leg side. And he's been castled. COIMS, very much in this game. Very and much in this game. Nipping it back, back up the hill as well, critically. Harry Tector looking for an almighty shot. His head just falling over. And it wasn't just the inward movement. He wasn't in a position to execute the shot. And all of a sudden, CIYMS's total of 110 is looking like a mighty one. It is. And if ever there's a man for a crisis, in walks Curtis Camfer. Obviously came out bat on his Irish debut in a crisis and, and saw Ireland to respectability. And he's going to need to do something similar for his side today. We've been blessed with good weather. We've been blessed with really good cricket, both yesterday and today at the Belmont ground here. Just outside Belfast. Feels a little bit more like Lamanga right now, Kyle, doesn't it? I'm considering putting a little bit of sun cream on here, so I am, Andrew, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, beautiful day here in East Belfast. Simi Singh now going to face up to Alan Coulter. And there's going to be a period of sustained pressure here from, from CI. An excellent start. Interesting now, Nigel Jones has taken himself out from slip just to reinforce that offside. Going to try and strangle Simi Singh, force him into a, taking a risk, play across the line. Just not sure if taking slip out is the right choice. They need to break this partnership with these two internationals. Last two really outstanding batsmen for YMCA. Singh dances down the track, can only find the man. And a bit of a stir there, Alan Coulter just taking a moment, making eye contact with Simi Singh. Very much in the game, an aggressive bowler. Likes to, know, likes to let the batsman know he's in a contest. And the YM batters are very much in a contest at the moment. Jones just scampering across, changing his fielding position. He's going to go to mid on. He thinks that's a critical spot for seeing the top left of your screen there for Singh, who really does like to hit it through that zone. Interesting to see. Will Singh continue to use his feet? He used them almost every delivery yesterday against Donamana. This time staying in his crease. Just working behind square on the offside and I suppose that's what this field does with such a heavily stacked ring offside field it makes singles very difficult to pick up. Yeah and that and that was very reminiscent of the run out of Simi Singh against England if you're a call off Adil Rashid I think batting with Curtis Comfer there he's just knocked the ball straight to the fielder and called the run. Comfer quite rightly sending him back. It's always backward point Kyle. It's every single time the mix up because the batsman who hits it wants the run and then the guy who thinks he should be calling it because it's behind square doesn't. Always confusion at backward point. Glorious shot. And I think Alan Coulter has not just done really well to save the boundary but a little bit of self-preservation as well. And luckily the noise you heard there was the thud off the boot. It doesn't go in to the body of Coulter. Yeah, it wouldn't have been good for the sore knee. Alan Coulter's nursing. Good stop. And the big fella just again. Wouldn't want to meet him at a dark alley at night, let me tell you, Andrew. Sure, you've made plenty of journeys down those <laughs> around the world, Kyle, but that's not for today. As we see Coulter doing a really effective job for his captain. Nigel Jones is ringing the changes. It feels like almost every ball. This time, the man who was out at that strange fielding position of a very deep, backward, fine leg has come up into the circle to allow mid-off to go back to long off. And Simi Singh is going to hammer it. Uh, I thought wide of Nigel Jones at first at mid-arm, but Jones hanging right on the edge of the circle, just a single. Yeah, and he hasn't timed that, Simi. The right option. But, you know, Nigel Jones asking a lot of Alan Coulter. In fact, should, not asking a lot, showing an awful lot of faith in his opening bowler is a better way to put it. You know, bowling with a six, six men on the offside, all three men on the leg side up in the circle. So showing great faith in the control that Alan has. Jones now changes the field for Camfer. He goes back into slip. Fine leg goes back out outside of the circle. Long off comes up to mid off. 
Camfer immediately calls yes, good running between the wickets. Even a direct hit, he would have been safely home. And that's what he does so effectively. He looks such a tidy batsman. Yeah, he's, he's you know this is a, this is a pitch maybe tailor made for him. He's going to have to just knock it round, run the ones and twos. I think Bobby Gamble plays similarly. You know, it's a very difficult pitch to, to score boundaries on. It's a difficult pitch just to bat on in general. So you know, at, at the moment, five for two, almost at the end of the third over. CI are very much back in this game. And in many ways, replicating what the YMCA seamers did, did so well at the start of the innings as well. Tying up the batsmen and then giving their spinners a chance to just control the game in those middle overs after the power play. Another change in the field. Just in between those deliveries, Nigel Jones put himself down to long on. And that's exactly where the ball goes to close out the third over. Another good one from Coulter. Singh will keep the strike. The score after three, just six for two. Yeah, curious. Uh, when you look at the, the Dublin YMCA bowling card that you know Tom Anders bowled two overs and took one for three on a pitch where obviously batting against the new ball batting against Seamers who bowled straight very difficult to score on and perhaps you know at the conclusion again that'd be something that, that the YM boys will look back and reflect on you know was that a missed opportunity did they bowl a little bit too much of the inexperienced left arm spinner uh, when perhaps he had done his job for for, for, for a couple of overs you could have then mixed it up and, and brought the scene back on but it's a very easy game from here a wee bit of 2020 hindsight perhaps on show but certainly something to reflect on Seeing down the track skews off the outside edge just over the head of the man wide of the man that third man who's in the circle that's Trevor Britton and the first boundary for YMCA yeah, it's the first boundary, but again, it's a little bit of a notch in Mark Adair's belt there, really. He's found the outside edge, but fortune favours the brave, doesn't it? You know, Simi Singh's play, you know, fast hands, swung hard, found the outside edge, and it's sealed over short third band for the for the first boundary of the innings. I'm just not convinced by this wide, deep backward, fine leg position that it's of any use to where Simi Singh is going to look to hit the ball. So we're going to see a change in the field, but it's going to be third man that comes back, an extra cover that comes up into the circle. So that... Wide fine leg will stay in place for the moment. <sighs> Beautifully bowled. Seeing again, as he has throughout these couple of days, trying to use his feet every single ball, and he ends up beating himself outside the off stump. And how's that one not hit the stumps, Kyle McAllen? Yeah, it's a great reply from Mark Adair. Holds his head in his hands. Got to be very close. And again, that was nearly the, the much sought after third wicket in the power play. You know, the... the, the the golden ticket now is, you know, if you get three wickets in the first six overs, you generally win the majority of your games. So over ninety percent of your matches, the stats say, if you can find those three wickets in the power play, even when you're defending a total as low here as one hundred and ten, you're definitely going to be in the ascendancy. Can mark it there, find another. Just a little bit of seam movement, if we, as we've seen on show. Yeah, Sami Singh, looking back. Hoping that maybe umpire Roy Black would have given that away, but just inside the wide line. And the fact that Simi Singh has given himself a little bit of room there has probably tilted the the the, the scales in, in the bowler's favour. Yeah, tries the Yorker this time, Adair right into the block hole. Singh digs it out. Probably for the second time today, maybe just a little bit of a favourable decision towards the bowler. Well, as a bowler myself, and Andrew, you and I should be in the bowlers' union here. Uh, you know, we'll, I think this game's hard enough for the bowlers, isn't it? We've, we have to bowl in a very narrow channel to very short boundaries with limited fielders outside the circle. I think that they deserve a break once in a while. Yeah, absolutely well <laughs> said, Carl McAllen, as always. Dare searching for this third wicket. Sing down the track again. No bounce at all. Two, three, four bounces through to the keeper, Chris Doherty. That one has simply died in the wicket. Yeah, I'm just going to have a little look to see if Mark Adair has... No, has he run his fingers down the side of the ball? Not at all. He's just died in the pitch. Under the bat of Simi Singh. I was talking with Nigel Jones, the COMS captain, just during the, the break as he was warming up having a bowl, and he just said he, he cooked so difficult to find any timing on this pitch. Seeing it outside the offside, this time comes over the head of Karthik, and he's oh, not even going to get a hand on it. Kartik Rajavalu has already put one down. He felt that he was in the game there. And if it was a Curtis Camphor underneath that, surely that would have been at least a chance. Yeah, I think had he dived there, the ball certainly landed very close to him. 
bit of disappointment, but as you can see, uh, Curtis Comfrey yesterday, I think that ball has landed pretty close enough that it would have merited a, a dive, particularly defending such a low score. You've got to try and take those half chances. Yeah, we've spoken so much about the fielding over the course of the last two days. You just feel if that had gone towards a Harry Tector, a Curtis Camfer, a Tim Tector, a Bobby Gamble, you'd have seen at least the dive go in. And with the way YMCA have fielded throughout the two days, there's every chance it would have stuck. So Adair so nearly finding that third wicket and it would have been the big wicket of Simi Singh. Yeah, a lot rests on the shoulders of Simi Singh as he faces Alan Coulter's third over. And How and often does that happen? The ball just ends up following you, Kyle. That one bursts through the hands of Carla Grajavalu and to add insult to injury, Nigel Jones can't claw it in. It's going to be the second boundary. That for me, Kyle, was a chance. Absolutely, it's just burst through the hands of Regivello at mid-wicket and it's, it, it's just typically the game. You know, that's, the ball's just following him wherever he goes now, the ball's following him. It's a powerful shot, picked up, Alan Coulter hopeful. And Nigel Jones tosses the ball back into the field of play in frustration. Small margins, Regivello now being moved across to extra cover. Yeah, the ultimate ignominy really is a fielder, isn't it? The ball's followed you and then you're moved, you're hidden away. So Nigel Jones going into that critical position for Singh. He loves it through there, working the ball wristily through mid-wicket and mid-on. He's going to drive it. And if Mark Adair <laughs> didn't stop that one, it would have been to Rajavelu again. He just couldn't ride a curl. No, Mother Cricket just does this to us sometimes. Good shot from Simi Singh. He's just starting to look very dangerous. 13 out of 15 runs scored for YMCA. Um, it's important that he, he takes the attack back to the, the CI bowlers who have bowled beautifully with the new ball. Really good stop from Mark Adair, actually a cover. Save not just a single there, but probably a couple. Down the track, skews off the outside edge. Third man continues to be in the circle, so he's going to have work to do. Chases the ball down towards the boundary, scoops it back in. Brilliant fielding. It's going to save just the single because Curtis Camfer lightning quick between the stumps, so they'll get back for three. But super work from David Robinson. Yeah, an excellent piece of fielding there. The ball has gone. It's fled off the outside edge. Third man up in the circle. And yet I thought that would have run, off, run out for four. Just stuck in the surface. But a brilliant piece of fielding from young David Robinson. Yeah. Much to the delight of the CI spectators in the balcony above him. Yeah, the home crowd is going to play its role over the course of the next hour or so as well. To see which of these two sides is going to be leaving on a jet plane down to sunny La Manga next May. Big prize at stake. Half an appeal, but just with Coulter's natural angle and angling down the slope, surely missing leg stump. Yeah, just having a little look there. You can just see, you can see middle and off stumps. So head and hands for Alan Coulter. He's just got that kind of tricky action, though. He seems to be hurrying both the batsmen. Yeah, he's, he's a little bit quicker than you think. He's a strong, strong guy. You see, he's a very you know, strong physique. And, uh, you know, he just has that ability to skid it on. And his, his great knack is that he generally takes it away from the right-hander. And Kartik Rajavelu now moved from the offside across the square leg. What chances are the ball being flicked straight to square leg, this ball, Andrew? It's going to be hammered into the offside just for a single. There's protection out there. Yeah, Rajavelu, of course, came into the starting eleven because of the injury to Jason van der Merwe in the warm-up. I think he ended up trotting on the rope and just rolled his ankle, so misfortune for him and for COIMS, a critical batsman for the NCU side. But Rajavelu is getting moved all over the place. Seems like he's constantly coming across our screen. Bowls a little bit of tidy offspin, Cardick. You might well see him play a, a big role in the game at some point. Beats him outside the off stump. Five overs gone, the score 19 for two. So after five overs, a quarter of this chase for YMCA, the score 19 for two. You can see the run rate at the bottom of your screen, less than four and over, but it was often around that for Sierra YMS whilst they were batting first. Keep an eye on that graphic. Run rate required, it's now over a run of ball, Kyle. Yeah, the sort of mirror image I just want of, of the Dublin YM start. I just wonder will Nigel Jones learn the lessons from, from their innings and, and realise that perhaps 
you know, the, the seamers hitting back of a length, stump to stump, are, are as hard to score off as the spinners. But the, the luxury that Nigel Jones has is he's got a plethora of bowlers to, to, to choose from, Seymour spin, all high quality. And as I said at the break, I thought at 110, it was, it was going to be more of a game perhaps than some people thought. Mark Adair is going to continue from the pavilion end. Driven just wide of Nigel Jones, who gets a full palm at it, but ends up only being able to palm it across to mid-off. They'll get through for a single. Yeah, an excellent shot from Curtis Camphor there, full face of the bat. You know, timed it beautifully. Not an easy pitch to time the ball on, but short, compact player. Epitomised uh, in that cover drive. Beats him beautifully bowled again outside the off stump. Singh just looking for a defensive shot this time and it gets through to the keeper. Doherty just using that natural angle away from the right-hander. Yeah, beautiful delivery. That's that's Marketer's stock ball. You know, just looks to take the ball away from the right-hander. Good wrist position. And as we've seen already, then has that ability to bowl the nip backer that got that got Harry Tector. So he's a real handful. And, you know, the, the, the challenge here for Nigel Jones, does he bowl the two bowlers who are both sort of suffering from injury? They're, they're, they're a lot more straight through. You know, I just wondered, would, would Adair even bowl this third of his four in the spell? But you think he may even actually let them continue, go all the way with through with their full allocation of four? Yeah, possibly, because what CI have an inclination to do is they like to bowl at the death with their spinners. You know, Trevor Britton is, is a very effective off-spin bowler at the death, bowls full and straight. You know, plays the game of you know you miss I hit. Uh, you have James, Ca you have James Cameron Dow, you have Jacob Mulder, you have Cardick. You know, so he's got lots of options. Edged oh. and dropped. Chris Doherty got a full glove to it, but he's put it down. So similar to the one JJ Cassidy for YMCA took yesterday. It was a healthy edge, but that's a huge moment in the match. Yeah, very similar, reminiscent indeed of JJ Cassidy's catch. Chris Doherty's an excellent keeper behind the stumps, got a full hand to it. Unfortunately for C.I. West, put it down. It did go quickly to his right, there's no doubt. But I suppose the difference, you think about J.J. Cassidy's technique yesterday, opened up his body, went full with the two hands, full length to his right. Doherty could only get one hand to it, got a good palm on it, but he couldn't cling on. Seeing down the track again, that's the first really authoritative shot of the Ireland Internationals innings. Uses his feet, gets to the pitch of the ball and finds the boundary straight down the ground. That's a wonderful shot. One of a shot from Simi Singh, just gives himself a little bit of room, ties the ball beautifully, dissects the feelers at mid-off mid-on, much to the delight of the YM tent. Yeah, that's the first, almost a bit of relief from the YMCA tent. They've been very quiet, eerily quiet throughout this power play. Adair, how often do we see that? The moment after a drop catch, the next ball goes for four. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to catch the eye of the bowler or the captain after you've dropped that catch, sure you don't. Big last ball of the power play for Adair. Nice shape away from the right-hander. Right into the block hole. Can only find Jones in the cover. The end of the power play is going to come with a dot. The score now 26 for two. Look at the YM scorecard. Simi Singh dominating it. You know, 21 it. Almost a run of ball. A little bit like everybody this weekend. You know, very difficult as a team to support those partnerships. As you can see, a very important. This is just standard for, for from a CI point of view. Two terrific opening bowlers, very frugal. They also threaten to take wickets, and they've set it up now for Ted Britton. Yeah, you're just wondering, Kyle, would they continue with Alan Coulter and bowl his four overs all the way through from the Strathairn end of the ground? But it's going to be spin for the first time today. For the home side, Ted Britton, Trevor Britton, who of course had come across from the northwest, been really effective since he's moved to Belfast. He's he's a terrific bowler and he's a terrific he's a terrific guy. Um, wonderful story to tell, a, a, a tough story to tell, Andrew. You know, he, he's recovering from very a very dangerous form of cancer, and thankfully things are going very well for him. Good article in the Belfast Telegraph not long ago, and it's great to see him fit and healthy, and and playing in such a big game. Yeah, and you could hear the ovation there as his name was announced over the PA system from the home crowd. He's a much loved man, not just here in, in NCU cricket, but in in Northwest cricket as well, right the way across the two provincial unions that split up the north of Ireland from a cricketing context. And 
it's an interesting action. It doesn't get a huge amount of sort of revolution on the ball, but just has a lot of control over his off breaks. I, I, I don't be fooled by his action. Seems quite innocuous, but he does. He gets good drop on it. He bowls quite an attacking wide line, and, he, and he's very clever. He mixes his pace up. Very, very good bowler. Ted played a little bit for Ireland Day in the past, and 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 no doubt is the go-to man here for Nigel Jones. So Jones, he's got you know Jacob Muller, no doubt will maybe come on at this end, and then you've got. You know James Cameron die to follow. He starts nicely. I think the the thing I love to see he's such a tactician of the game, Nigel Jones, who's just fielded the ball there, the COIMS skipper and the Leinster Lightning head coach, of course, getting his off spinner on to use the angle and the hill to turn it into the right handers. And as you say, probably see Jacob Mulder from this the pavilion end where our cameras are, and he'll be turning his leg breaks away. So he's thinking about every aspect of the game, Jones. Interesting, interesting field, nicely played by Comfort. Interesting field that he's, he's bowling to a 5-4 offside field with no man at cow corner. Uh, Nigel Jones perhaps feeling that with the low bounce, it's going to be hard to get under the ball there. And for Simi Singh, that, that change has been made. No man now at mid-wicket. Happy to give Simi the single to the leg side. So throwing the gauntlet down to Curtis Comfort to take a risk. Just opens the face in that, and he's going to beat, very nearly beat the man, that third man who makes a good one-handed stop. So just be a single. Yeah, big, big shout out here as well. We so often hear from our ex-Irish internationals who, who watch on from the streams overseas, the likes of Trent Johnson. But Jeremy Bray just wants to give a big shout out for Trevor Britton, absolute legend of a man. What a bowler for COIMS he's been. It was a pleasure playing alongside him. Nicely played again by Curtis Comfort. Great to hear from Jeremy Bray. How good a cricketer was he, Kyle? Uh, well, if you if you let him tell you how good a cricketer he was, you know, <laughs> Bray so was keen to let us all know how good. We wouldn't have a, had the time on air. What a fabulous, what a fabulous bloke, what a fabulous player, and doing a wonderful job in Denmark. Yeah, re big resurgence in Danish cricket over recent years under the stewardship of Bray. Down the track, hit into the sky. There is a fielder down at Long On. Is this going to be an opportunity? It is, and Singh perishes. He's holed out. I think it's to Jacob Mulder down at long on. That's a huge wicket in the context of the match. He might look innocuous with his off breaks. Beautifully bowled. He gets the big wicket of Singh. That's a massive wicket. And from my point of view, if I was sitting in the YM tent, you know, no, no need to take that risk at this stage. You know, he had three men out. Nobody's saving the Singh on the leg side. Just take your ones and twos, knock it round, set it up. And Simi Singh has, has departed for 22. And the pressure firmly on Dublin YMCA now. Yeah, an extraordinary piece of cricket. The run rate required just to run a ball. And he is holed out to long on. That is not a replay that Simi Singh is going to want to see again. No, I don't think it's particularly clever cricket, personally. You know, you've, you've young Tim Tector now to the crease, 17 year old, going to be under a lot of pressure. Simi Singh had, had done well, got the 22, done the hard work, and he's just thrown it away. I think that's the only way to describe that, really. At no point did he even look at getting it wider of long on. He couldn't have picked him out any better if he tried. Beautifully bold and brilliantly described, Kyle, by you. Trevor Britton gets that drop on his off breaks and that's ended up being what has deceived Simi Singh. Yeah, you know, Ted makes you do all the work yourself. You know, he takes a lot of the pace off it. He bowls quite wide outside off stumps, so you're having to fetch it a little bit more and Simi Singh's looked at the toe of his bodies. He's, you know, he's tried to hit it over, you know, mid on. He could have learned a little from Nigel Jones. Nigel but you know, bought his time a little bit. He, you know, he, he waited to the fifteenth over. And whilst that's a very difficult thing to do, he did. He waited to the fifteenth over and he set it up. And, and, and has got CI up to what's now starting to look like a very competitive total. When you need to run a ball, why are you trying to smash sixes in the seventh over of the game? Tim Tector to the crease, he's not on strike. Because the batsman will have crossed and Camfer is now going to have to try and play that anchor role and, and that will be something that he'll thrive on. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, a lot has been made that yeah, that Curtis hasn't really had the impact perhaps in the club and in Interpro game that, that he might have, you know, after the wonderful start he made for Ireland and what better opportunity is there than today? End of the seventh over, 30 for three. And with that, Kyle, I'll bid you adieu and leave you in the hands of John Kenny, who will guide you through the next six or seven overs. Well, John, at halfway, we, we debated the nature of the game. Where's your money now? I still think it's a YM. 
Uh, they know what they have to do, but uh, I think you were right. Just listen to your commentary there. I think there's no need for Simi to have a go. A run a ball, would have done. Just kept the scoreboard ticking over. Two experienced players. And a change of bowling from the pavilion end. James Cameron Dow, Irish international, coming on spin at both ends now. Yeah, I'm going to... I'm I'm going to make a very controversial statement here. That's with, a change. With 13 <laughs> overs left in it, I make CIYMS the favourites. I think it's their game to lose now. Mm -hmm. Well, we talked about the pitch as well. It's The ball's not coming off the bat really out there, is it? It's a bit of a pudding of a pitch. Balls have kept low. Wickets have been uh, given away a little cheaply at times. We've seen some uh, balls keep low and take wickets as well. And... Because the ball's not coming on as it should do on a pitch that was actually used yesterday as well, uh, it's difficult for the batsman to pierce the field. That's a good start from the left-handed spinner. Tall man, James Cameron Dow, 30 years of age, born in Cape Town, but has played test cricket for Ireland against Afghanistan last year. Push for two here. And just be the single though. Fielder in quickly. Cuts that off. Scoring to 31 for three. A lot riding on Curtis Camfer's shoulders now, I'd say. Just broke his way into the Irish one-day international squad in those games against England in the summer in Southampton. South African under-19 player at one stage. Grandmother is Irish, so he's declared for Ireland. Didn't have the greatest day with the bat yesterday against Donna Manna. Beats the outside of the bat. Tim Tector, the three Tector brothers we've seen in action now. Batting Jack just made one. Harry out for a naught. So pride of the family with Tim at the moment. Hear a lot of very positive reports about Tim Tector. What an opportunity he has today to... They really make an impact. Just 17 years of age. Camfer calls him through and uh, does the right thing. And then at backward point spills it. Kartik Radlavaju has been in this game a lot and uh, moved around the ground. It wasn't great feeling from him. Mark Adair doing the fielding. And we've just seen that, and that's the point, isn't it? It's really difficult to pierce this field, especially where the weather bowling to that uh, strong offside field. Yeah, I think it's the sort of wicket that you never feel in on. It's hard to time the ball. Uh, we cry of anguish there from Camfer. That's nicely done. From Camfer to Adair, who scoops the ball back to the wicket keeper. That's clever batting. Just drop soft hands on the bat. Call your partner through. Good over from James Cameron Dow. Uh, no doubt the CI spinners are going to make Dublin YMCA work for every run. And after eight overs, you know they're just they're just going at just above fours. So it's a mirror image of the CIYMS innings. Is there somebody here who's going to be able to play the role that Nigel Jones played for the for the Belfast side? Yeah, they were 33 for three at one stage as well, with the departure of their opener, John Matchett. So, eight overs down, 33 for three, with Jack Tector, Simi Singh and Harry Tector all departing. And Britain to continue now. Oh, Ooh, that's a big, thick outside edge. Should have got at least two, as the fielder... Scampers just in front of us to cut off the boundary. First slip would be called into action there. Yeah, a little bit finer than Curtis Comfort would have anticipated. And again, just highlights the line and the pace that Trevor Britton bowls with. Making the batsman do all the work. Second spell at CI for Britton. You can see him back, 37 year old, uh, returning. From Bonds Glen. Yeah, 
Interestingly, Tim Tector was caught at Deep Cow Corner off the bowling of Dwayne McGurgill yesterday in the final. No man there at the moment. I wonder will the young fella take that shot on. Yeah, it's a wide open vacant area down there, isn't it? Nigel Jones at mid on, the captain. Well, there you go. As soon as you say it, they're going to take a short uh, third man out of that position and place him down in cow corner. Well spotted. It's called doing your homework, both on the field and here. Yeah, it's good captaincy from Nigel Jones. He's moving things around as well. He's pushed uh, David Robinson into that um, mid-off position, or mid-on position. He's taken himself into backward point. And another one keeps low. Yeah, I think you're going to find Ted Britton going to bowl four very cheap overs here. He's going to be a very canny operator on this surface. And good feeling off his own bowling in this form of the game. Thought balls also important. 36 for three. Nice shot from Tim Tector. Force it through the offside. Well, I'll come back for the second with midfield. Yeah, as captain, I wouldn't be disappointed with Alan Coulter there. I'd always back the fielder to attack the ball. Try and cut down the second run. But good running. Good urgency from Tim Tector. Forced to misfield. Two welcome runs to, to the, the side from Sandy Mount. It's a bit of a long hop, that uh, previous delivery. But you could see it just never got up. Again, fielded by the bowler to prevent the run. Another interesting side issue here to be very... Trevor Britton gets through his overs very quickly. Yeah. You know, and before you look, like there's nine overs have gone in the reply, not even on 40 yet. So it'll not be long before a little bit of panic sets in. It's important that Curtis Camfer, who's relatively young himself, talks talks the, the youngest of the Tector brothers through, through the next five or six overs. Curtis Camfer, just 21 years of age. He's on 12. Tim Tector on three. James Cameron down to continue then from the pavilion end. This is the 10th over. Chasing 111 for victory. It's the European Cricket League playoff between CIYMS, who... Won the toss, decided to bat, made 110 for six in their 20 overs. Nigel Jones doing the feeling. Left handed spinner, James Cameron Dow. Into the pads. And good stop. Very agile off his own bowling for somebody so tall. James Cameron at the Excellent stop. The pressure mounting. That's the thing with drop balls. It builds the pressure. Yes, no. And once again, the bowler feels off his own bowling. A little limp from Cameron Dow as he goes to try and collect that ball. It's a very low score, 38 in the 10th over. But no need to panic just yet. That's another dot ball, beats the outside of the bat. Two to come on the over. Yeah, and just as I suspected, Margaret are coming back at long on, just to get out of the over here with as little damage as possible. But why I'm saying struggling here as we approach halfway through the innings. Uh, 
Uh, just pushed into the leg side. For a single. And at the end of this delivery, it'll be halfway through the YMCA reply. 111 needed for victory and a place in La Manga next year in the European Cricket League at stake. The cries of catch it. Uh, the wicket keeper couldn't pick it up. They're going to run through for at least two. Will it go all the way to the boundary? No, the fielder down there does his job well. And that ends the over. And two to the total. Ten down in this clear currency European Cricket League playoff. Three then, off ten. 111 required for victory. Colin McCallan and John Kenny, along with Andrew Leonard, bringing you commentary on the final club game of the season. In the terrific day yesterday in the National Cup final between YMCA and Donna Manor, YMCA victors winning the 2020 Cup against the 2017 victors CIYMS. And great to be bringing you pictures from a sunny day here in Belmont near Belfast. 41 for three, 111 needed and Ted Britton to continue from the far end. Yes, playing right into Nigel Jones's hands. Here he is, Jacob Muller, who'll bowl. Very good leg spin. Camfer just stood away from his stumps, tried to cut that one away. Pushed it down to Nigel Jones at backward point. Yeah. Nigel will be hoping just to hold back his leg spinner as long as he possibly can. Tim Tector, 17 years of age. Red helmet. Made his T20 debut in February of this year for the Ireland Wolves against Namibia. Tim Tector. Harry's in the Irish team now. 20 T20 internationals to his credit. And Three ODIs against England. Um, Captain Jack Tector on the verge of being into the Irish squad at some stage. Won't have a, an Irish international game for a while yet, though. Britain giving it a lot of flight. Camfer goes through for the quick single. Yeah, Nigel Jones has David Miller just post, posted on the edge of the ring there. Difficult for him to save that single. But at this stage, with the run rate already at seven and over, singles will continue to push that rate higher and higher. I'm going to push down to Cow Corner now that uh, Tim Tector's facing. Full toss. Got away with that. Just the single. And Nigel Jones just changing the field. Every time. He's actually pushed Miller back. He was coming up to the circle. Better length delivery. And Miller immediately called into action. Clever stuff this from Trevor Britton. Has the field well spread. Taking all the pace off it. Asking questions of the batsman. And another over in the favour of the bowling side. 46 for 3 after 11. And the two batsmen come together. It was just one over in the CIYMS innings that was really telling on this game. It was the fourth over bowled by Killian McDonald, which went for 22. And that was the one that pushed the home side past the 100, or up towards the 100 at least. And uh, that could be 
the big contribution in this game, as you say, you think CI are in the box seat? Yeah, and now we see the introduction of Jacob Muller, who's will bowl his leg spin here from the pavilion end, will bowl a lot of flippers. Probably the best way to approach him is to, is to play for the flipper. He tries to get the majority of his wickets, LBW and bold. Twenty-five years of age, Australian-born Irish cricketer. Made his T20 international debut against Hong Kong in 2016. Nicely played from Curtis Camper. Just rocks onto the back foot, punches it in front of the square. Brings Tim Tector back on strike. They would need a good over here now just to get themselves back in contention. A 10 or a 12 run over. They still no need to panic yet. Take the singles when they come. Camper on 17. Tim Tector on 7. It's intelligent batting. Take them when they come. Three singles from the first three deliveries from Jacob Mulder. That's short of the fielder. That's going to beat the fielder. Uh, not the fielder, though, sweeping. They're coming back for the second. Uh, that's good running. And the 50 up for YM. Sharp running between Camfer and Tim Tector. 21-year-old and 17 years of age. Of course, they'd run quickly. Yeah, very good running because John Matchett at deep cover is a very good fielder. Quick to the ball. Just feel that this the game is just coming to a boil right now. Cries of push. We won't get the second though. Jimmy Cameron Dow with the good strong left arm cuts it down to just a single to end the eleventh over, and fifty-two for three. In fact, end the twelfth over. My apologies, and fifty-two for three. Eight to go. And it's nicely balanced here. Yeah, Tim Tector and Curtis Comfer just taking very few risks, running hard, knocking the ball around. And now Nigel Jones going to come into the attack, keep her up. Jones, he's maybe lost a little bit of the pace that he once had. But a very canny bowler will be very awkward on this pitch. But he just wants to keep you know, his options open. He's, he's one over left of Trevor Britton. He's got James Cameron Dye. He's got Jacob Muller. And he's got one of at Coulter and Adair up his sleeve, so lots of options for the skipper. And I'm still, I think, confident in my earlier prediction, John. There you are, I've, I've said it. I'm putting, my, I'm putting my reputation out there, I'm putting it out there early. <laughs> still think the home side might get over the line here. Yeah, it's going to be intriguing, these last eight overs. 38 year olds, Nigel Jones, the captain. New Zealand-born Irish cricketer. Rolls right arm, medium pace. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, was part of that Irish squad in India for the 2011 World Cup, but didn't play. Born in Timaru in New Zealand. And it will be Tim Tector on 11 to face the first ball from the captain. And he's bowled him. Straight through. Knocks back the off stump. And you did say he was a canny bowler. And first up, it's Tim Tector heading back. Yeah, Nigel Jones, a very canny operator. He knows his, knows what he's doing. Just a little nip backer. Knocked back the off stump of Tim Tector. And Big wicket. 
Yeah, it's a good wicket that just it disrupted a, a, a little consolidatory partnership there. But at 52 for four, YMC are struggling. And the pressure ramps up in Curtis Camper. Bobby Gamble, the new batsman, to join Camphora there. who have to do the anchor roll now. Bobby Gamble from Leinster Lightning. Represented Loughborough University and Somerset and Fremantle District Club in Western Australia. And his coach, Alan Lewis, there looking very pensive at the tent. Looks concerned. I think he understands the, the task that lies ahead. Ordinarily, 59 from 47 would be straightforward. But in today's conditions, it's mounting up to be a, what could potentially be an insurmountable task. Well, that was a brilliant first ball from Jones to get rid of the teenager, Tim Tector. Yeah, you say he's lost a lot of pace as he's gotten older, but he certainly whips the ball around quickly, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got a good strong wrist. Ball's off the wrong foot. But just, you know, he's a clever guy. He understands the game. You know, he's a high-level coach. He's got good knowledge. He'll, he'll nip the ball around here. be a handful. Short run-up as well. And Gamble off the mark. The pitch certainly is paying its part here. As you say, that in the normal context of a game with four down, you would think that YM should go on and win this, but because the ball is keeping so low on occasions and difficult to pierce the field, uh, Mark Adair diving away to his right-hand side, can't cling on. And he's taking his time getting up. You know, Adair has had back problems. He has bowled today. Thankfully, he's back on his feet. Good energy in the field. Home side sensing their opportunity. Worked into the leg side for a single for Gamble. Makes the score to 55. Yeah, good from Bobby Gamble. Looks busy. Just looking to try and drop the ball into the gaps. Get Curtis Camphor, who's the man set, back on strike. Again, a change in the field. Man trotting out to cow corner for Camphor, so... You can just drop bat on ball and push that into the leg side if you can to pick up a single or two. Well, he won't do it now because he's chopped on. And he looks back in disbelief at the stumps. And another one gone. And I'm beginning to believe that it could be the home side very much now in the box seat. Five down, 55 runs on the board. Yeah, excellent bowling from Nigel Jones. Just got that ball to dart back. Chopped on from Curtis Camphor. And at 55 for 5, CI firmly in the box seat here. Very difficult batting additions today. Brings to the crease Rory Anders. Rory Anders comes out to replace Curtis Camphor, who's gone for 19. He really could not believe that he chopped that one on. Look of disbelief in his face as he hear that death rattle behind him. Yeah, well, there's there's no coincidence that today that you know Nigel Jones, who's been the, the most dominant batter, is the, the guy who's looked to force the ball down the ground. Anybody who's looked to play two square of the wicket have done so at their peril. And again, Curtis Camphor, short and stocky batter, has looked to play that square, a little bit of movement, and and he's been castled. So now Bobby Campbell, Roy Anders. Under a lot of pressure here because the uh, say the CI bowling attack is very impressive. There's no weak links in it, and uh, with you know 56 runs required for victory, I'd be 
I think Nigel Jones will be the happier of the two captains right now. Yeah, he's got a change of bowling as well. James Cameron Dow has been replaced at the pavilion end by Jacob Mulder, who's switching ends. So two new batsmen at the crease. Gamble's on two. And Rory Anders is yet to score and yet to face. He's at the non-striker's end. A spin is doing it for the home side here and great fielding as well. That's up and over the top, and that's got to go all the way to the boundary, a much-needed boundary as well. Excellent shot from Bobby Gamble. Field set square. He's lifted the ball over extra cover. Dominant shot. He's going to need going to need a few more of those if he's going to bring his own side home. I wonder does he fancy Mulder get that big over I spoke about. They're going to have to do something quickly. Yeah, it's brought about an immediate change in the field and a good change in the field. You know, it's a very difficult wicket to score on square on. So the, the man at deep point has been brought in and the man has gone out at deep extra cover. LBW is going down leg side. Just knees around the corner. Is that going to be a leg by? Yeah, signalled as a leg by. That's the flipper that, that, that Jacob Muller bowls regularly now at this stage of the game. Clever bowling. Uh, Rory Anders to face for the first time. The 22-year-old. Plays for Munster Reds in the Interprovincial Series. Part of Ireland's squad for the 2016 Under-19 Cricket World Cup. Rory Anders, 2 for 18 in his four overs. Mulder bringing the fielder up at mid-on. Inviting the... The drive over the top against the spin. Positive, positive thoughts. Yeah, the way T20 has been played and has changed over the years since its introduction, it certainly was a, a batman's paradise. And it's difficult for bowlers, as we mentioned already, because they've got so little attitude in, in the way they bowl, and they can be Penalised quite heavily. I mean, this is good bowling. And it's good fielding as well. And that's also very much an important part of T20 cricket. Make sure you set up the fields right and field well. Yeah, good field set here now. Bought a couple of dots. James Cameron I dropped back now at long on. Great stuff here from CIYMS. Oh. <laughs> and Cameron Dow just in front of us. Throws back his head in frustration. Will they cut that off? No, is the answer. And that's four welcome runs. Yeah, a bit of good fortune for the men from Dublin. Boundary off the last ball of the over. Makes it a good one for them. Could there be a swing yet? Yeah, a couple of boundaries in that over. It's what they needed. 64 for five. Thanks, Kyle, for the moment. Andrew Leonard coming in to join me now for the potentially the last six overs. Yeah, thank you, John. And what a what a few overs we've seen. Coyms rest the initiative back, and so much through the magic of the leadership and bowling of this man, Nigel Jones. What a servant he has been to Irish club cricket. Two wickets in his first over. He's just pushing David Robinson down to third man, deep third man. And a half stop by Kartik and no run a cruise. And John, that required run rate at the bottom of your screen. 47 to win off 35 deliveries. We haven't seen anyone over the course of these two days really be able to score up at 9, 10 and over easily. Bobby Gamble has the power in his locker. Uh, cries of catch it. And it's gone up over the fielder's head. Jacob Mulder. Let's just scamper down and collect that ball, but they run through for two. 
Yeah, the perfect example there. No timing of any kind. Jones just slanting it in. Gamble looking to go straight down the ground, much more towards long on. And it simply loops over the head of Jacob Mulder off the inside edge of the bat. And you hear that sound out there. It's not coming off the middle. Gamble just tries to run that down. Can't get past the dare, though. The tools that Jones has at his armory as a bowling unit are just exceptional, though. So boosted by the return to bowling of Mark Adair. Two wickets early in his spell. He still has one over left. Having Adair back bowling is a huge plus for the home side. Leg by signalled. Yeah, Rory Anders is certainly capable with the bat in hand as well, but such disappointment for YMCA. They would have felt they were well ahead of the game at the halfway stage. All they needed to do was knock it around, take their singles. But some brilliance from Adair and now Jones combined with that dismissal that Simi Singh is just not going to want to watch again. I was just about to say that. That could be the big wicket, all right, because he's well set on 22. Didn't need to go for the big hike. That's nicely done. Just cushioned into the offside to get Anders up to the non-striker's end. Yeah, but what over are YMCA going to target? Because it doesn't look like scoring is going to be easy off Jones. You'd have to think they're going to take need to take a risk off Jacob Mulder. Mulder bowling his leg breaks with beautiful control. Such a talented man, Jacob Mulder. Leg spin in T20 cricket, such an art form. A quick single. And they get through easily enough with the misfield. In Callender, the doyen of Irish cricket just walked by us. Be happy man today. His Spurs side were 1 0 down at home to Southampton. And, uh, or away to Southampton. They won 5 1, I believe. I know, John. Come on. It's, it's still cricket season. Just give me one more day. We can talk <laughs> about the football from next week onwards. I just said he's a happy man. <laughs> Look at the scene we have. Isn't it absolutely Fantastic. glorious? It's beautiful. Midway through September and probably up around 20 degrees feels like the Costa del Belfast that's lovely yeah. and a prize on offer for one of these teams is the trip to the European Cricket League 16 club championship in La Manga in Spain 32 games spread out over 8 days hopefully our current crisis will be coming to an end at that stage May of next year that's the bowling figures yeah, and you can see Mulder in fact is going to be taken out of the attack he's bowled 2 overs for 14 and Jones feels that experience and pace on the ball is the way to go. So he's going to continue. We might see him finishing out. He'll bowl overs 17 and 19. But this 16th over is going to go to his tear away quick, Alan Coulter. There's the partnerships. Yeah. Tector. Jack Tector, first one to go. The score on three. And Harry Tector, back in the hutch, didn't add to that tally. Simi Singh went when the score was on 29. Tim Tector followed the score on 52. Just three added when Curtis Camford chopped on from the bowling of Jones. 55 for five at that stage. Yeah, I think it's going to be a critical over. Coulter having just one over remaining. He's changing ends as well. He's coming on now from the pavilion end. I'm not altogether sure why that is. Jones feels that he can maybe just get through the final over of Coulter's spell here. Same stage of the match though. Remember, it was 64 for five just before that 16th over from the left arm spin of Killian McDonald that Jones plundered for 22. How critical is that going to be? That could end up being the difference between the sides. Yeah, Bobby Gamble might target Coulter in this over. He's gone for just 13 runs in his three. But as you said, he's changed from the far end, the Strathairn end, to the pavilion end for this, the 16th over. Five to go, 111 needed for victory, 69 for five. It's finely balanced. It's one of the great thinkers of Irish cricket, Nigel Jones, and he's meticulous in everything he does. He's got everything set up perfectly. That's a wide to start, I would have thought. No, I think they might have got away with one there. Gamble was reaching for it. Yeah, Roly Black through the third time today, just fearing on the side of the boulder it was right by what is the guideline remember that's not that's not yeah, absolutely it's not set in stone is it no 
But the batsman didn't move outside the off stump, so to be honest with you, I think Coulter getting away with one there. Nicely done. Pumped into the offside. Will they go for the second one? No, there's a sweeper down there. And you can just feel the tension in the ground, can't you? There's some spectators away to our right-hand side. A lot of them leaning forward, intently watching this game. There's not a lot of shouting going on. It's very quiet. There's some spectators behind us up on the balcony as well. Yeah, the tension is palpable. It's 41 off 28. Advantage the home side at the moment, I feel. Now full toss. It's going to go into the boundary for four. And applause way to our right-hand side from the visiting side. That's a much-needed boundary. Coulter striving for the block hole, and it ends up being a freebie right around knee height for Rory Anders, and he's a very competent batsman. He's more known for his bowling with Irish under-19s back four years ago at the Under-19 Cricket World Cup in Bangladesh, but a very fine, very technically correct batsman. And with the power and height he possesses, easily dispatches that one away. Not one that Coulter will want to repeat. Five off the over. Cries of push. I won't run through for a second one there. Surely that would have been suicide. Yeah, Ted Britton down at fine leg who tidies up. He bowled so beautifully. Captured the big wicket of Simi Singh and just spent my time out of the commentary box watching from side on John and he got such a good demonstration of the way he varies his pace such a clevy, clever canny bowler John two balls to go then and it's the fourth and final over for Alan Coulter that's smart batting Nigel Jones the home captain uh, does the fielding but it's nice soft hands from Gamble, having hit a boundary in this over. Just eases it into that min-off position to take a single. 76 for five in the 16th over. 111 required for victory. Coulter's has gone for seven so far. Well, that could have gone anywhere. Instead, it goes for four. Thick inside edge to finish it. And that's a good over. 11 from it, from YMCA's point of view, he's lucky, head on hands time from the bowler. You can see it there, it was the old-fashioned Chinese cut, John, beats the, or, uh, hits the inside edge and beats the leg stump, and with that fine leg being posted so wide, just runs away for four, and that might not be the massive over that YMCA needed, but it's put the game back into the balance. All of a sudden now, 31 to win off 24, or 30 for a super over. Oh, super over. That would be a nice way to end the season, all right, wouldn't it? <laughs> wouldn't it just, John? And don't yeah. rule it out. It would be right around what might be anticipated. Uh, Shane Warren, when, when the England played in Australia in that uh, last uh, 50 over game a couple of days ago, shouting, come on, the super over. <laughs> <laughs> we want to keep going. We want this season to be dragged out. Yeah, it'll be a fantastic way to finish. I'll tell you from this point of view, I think that CI, uh, or from probably YM, would uh, would take the super over. But these two overs of Nigel Jones are going to be absolutely integral to which way this European Cricket League playoff is going to go. Gone for just seven in his two overs so far. He'll almost certainly bowl this over 17 and then over 19, the penultimate over of the match. We were talking yesterday, yesterday about how you want your best bowler bowling the second last over of the innings and there's no, no doubt that Nigel Jones is exactly that. Well, they're taking the score on from 55 for five to 80 for five now with four overs to be bowled. Bobby Gamble and Rory Anders. Anders on 14, Gamble on 11. And Jones with his penultimate over from the Strathairn end. That's in the air. There's no fielder down there. That should be enough. And it's going to roll into the boundary fence. And that's four runs. And is the balance swinging towards YM. Super shot from Bobby Gamble. In fact, it's just slightly over pitched from Nigel Jones. Really into the slot. Mid off is in the circle. So he just holds his shape, clears the front leg, 
It's high and handsome. Just a couple of bounces over the rope. Big moment in the match. The last seven deliveries. The momentum, as you say, John, just turning YMCA's way. That's clever batting. Just ease it round the corner. They won't come back for a second. Quickly, quickly in is the fielder. But having hit the boundary, it's clever batting. Just pick up Singer from the next ball. Thought there was time for two there, John. Gamble just a little bit slow on the turn. I'm not sure if he his spikes just got caught a little bit. Rory Anders certainly was happy to go back for two, but just a single to the total. 26 to win now off 22, getting it back towards that kind of run a ball that they'll feel comfortable with. Good hitting to come as well. Tom Anders padded up. He's waiting to go, Rory's brother. Well, yesterday's game, Donna against YMCA kind of died the slow death. This one certainly is in the melting pot. Guys of yes, no, but that's good fielding from Karthik. It's been a tough day for Karthik Rajavelu, but he's saved one there. Gets his body on line at backward point, being moved around, hidden a bit in the field, but really good stop. And nearly causes a bit of confusion again between the batsmen. Well, that's better placement. Karthik does the fielding again. The ball has followed him, John, hasn't it? It has all day. And when they moved him, the ball followed him. Well, he's been busy out there. I haven't seen him bowl yet. I wonder will he be used towards the end of the innings? Probably not. Coulter, Adair, Britton, Cameron Dow, Mulder and Nigel Jones. Six bowlers used so far. Every delivery is almost an event in itself now, John. And you look at... Should they have taken one there, got through quickly? Probably the correct decision not to, but every dot ball is a big boost for the home side and the home fans. 25 to win. Make that 24. Yeah, so 17 over on the score. Moves to 87 for five. Those graphics just update on your screen there. You can see Coulter bowled out. Who are they going to use for these spare overs? No doubt Mark Adair will likely bowl one as long as his body allows him. You'd have to think Nigel Jones will bowl the other. But will it be James Cameron Dow? Or will it be Jacob Mulder? Or will they go with the off-breaks of Ted Britton? Choice to make here for Nigel Jones could be critical. I think Cameron Dow's coming back. Yeah, he's been pretty good in his two overs. Just the six runs conceded. Left arm spinner. And he's coming back, indeed, from the pavilion end. Almost too many options in a funny way for Nigel Jones. Such yeah. a rich bowling stocks that he has. This is really tight. 24 runs needed from just 18 deliveries. Three overs to go. Five wickets in hand. It is nicely balanced, this game. See on your screen there, Cameron Dow, his two overs just conceded six runs. Yeah, really nice atmosphere building up at the Belmont ground, John. And a little bit more than a, a run of ball needed, but you can't afford an over with just three or four runs off it. OMCA have to keep finding the singles and twos and complementing it with the, it with the occasional boundary. A lot of room on the leg side, just one fielder in the ring on the leg side. So it could be a tip and run and push for two into the leg side from Gamble here. <laughs> And he's bowled him. And he just tried to dab it. Didn't come off. And that's an important wicket. Yeah, an absolute beauty. And another big moment in the match. Cameron Dow back into the attack. First ball. The dream left arm spinner's dismissal. Angling in. Pitched on middle stump. Has straightened. Held its line. And has cleaned Bobby Gamble up. Huge wicket. The sixth in the match. Advantage again to the home side. It's actually just kissed the top of that off bail, John. A real beauty. Sensational spin bowling. And it's going to be the Anders brothers to the crease now. As Tom Anders joins his brother Rory. We've spoken all weekend about the family affair that is Irish cricket. Could be a fitting finish if the Anders can bring YMCA home. Yeah, three Tector brothers in the YMCA lineup. A couple of Anders. Rory and Tom. 
We've seen them bowl earlier on. Tom, surprisingly, only bowled two overs, took one for three. Well, it wasn't bowled out. And there's Munster Reds. T20, uh, that's what the Munster Reds play. They're not involved in the three day or the 50 over game. Thus far, the Munster Reds, hopefully that will change in the next couple of seasons in this oddest of years. 87 for six now. Yeah, Tom Andrews' batting's really improved in, in recent times as well. He's a lusty hitter down the order. Immediately down the track, but Cameron Dow finding a beautiful length and finding turn, and Jacob Mulder from long on just asking us yes. in the commentary box, is it a super over if we end up with a tie? Yeah, <laughs> I think he'd be happy if he can finish it off in the requisite 20 overs. A uh, loud appeal and not given by the umpire. James Cameron Dow bowling from quite a long way outside the stumps and he's coming in from a wide angle. That was a strange kind of shot. It didn't come off though. Yeah, looking for the reverse sw sweep. In fact, even changing his stance. Real switch it. No contact made. Big appeal turned down. That looks a bit high. But all these appeals, of course, are adding to the fact that th these are dot balls. Yeah, critical over. Wicket, dot, dot, dot. And it is turning this European Cricket League playoff the way of the home side. His brother, Rory Anders, comes down to Tom. He says, you've got to get bat on ball. Get me on to strike. Can't afford these dots. All of a sudden, the 24 to win that was off 18 deliveries is now 24 to win off 14. Tall task for YMCA. <laughs> Cameron Dow just fooled everybody. <laughs> yeah, but really good backing up by Rory Anders, keeping his bat in the hand, watching the bowler, not leaving his crease. That's a wide down the leg side. Tom Anders just can't make contact with the ball at the moment. It goes to show just how difficult spin is to play. Still surprised by the decision to bowl Neil the previous over. Finally gets something on it and gets off the mark. 22 now needed. And Nigel Jones is going to have a big decision to make in terms of will J James Cameron Dow actually close out and bowl the final over the innings or will he go back to his gun player, his Irish international marker there? Yeah, Dare bowled his overs from the pavilion end. Might think about two here. Ah, that's great fielding. Keeps it down to one, and applause all around from the supporters and from the home side, CI. And that's the end of the third over, and a good one too for James Cameron Dow, taking a very important wicket of Bobby Gamble, gone for 17. Yeah, and probably even more importantly than just the wicket, John, only three runs coming from the over. So it's 21 to win now from the final 12 deliveries of the match, 20 for the super over. But with scoring being at such a premium run scoring, You'd have to fancy the home side to close this out. And in fact, what I think we're going to see is Nigel Jones take himself out of the attack. Mark Adair is going to change ends, come in from the far end, and that will surely mean that James Cameron Dow will bowl the final over the match. Yeah, it's all down to 12 deliveries now. From the Mark Adair. Heatley Tector, our PA announcer here, announces Mark Adair to come on to bowl his final over. Two for 13 in this previous three. Did the damage at the top of the order. Getting the opener, Jack Tector, for a single, and then Harry bowled with an expansive shot, which didn't come off for naught. And again, you can see Nigel Jones meticulous in getting every single aspect of where his fielders are, what part of the ground they're in. Every angle is considered. He's talked through his bowling plan with Mark Adair. Where is he going to bowl? Is it going to be full and straight? Both fine leg and third man in the circle. Protection down the ground. Three fielders in the deep on the leg side, two on the offside. I'd imagine that Mark Adair is probably going to go try to go full and straight here. 
Yeah, and one on short fine leg as well. Jones is out in the boundary. There's a man at cow corner. And that's very wide. Yes, lower ball. Flurry delivery, clever. all right. Yeah, but oh, I think they got away with that one as well. Just take a look at the replay if we can. Might have been one or two going the way of the bowler today. Slower ball cutter was actually out of the back of the hand, and look at oh. that. It has turned like a leg break. Yeah, beautifully bowled. It was well bowled, but at this stage of the game, he could have been called for a wide. As it was, it's a dot. Fuller delivery. And some nice footwork, and he shows his football skill by A, stopping the ball, and B, trying to kick the stumps down. He loves the big stage, Mark Adair, and that's exactly what this is. The winner's going out to represent Ireland in La Manga, stops it with one touch, fitting to the Premiership football we were just talking about, and looks to finish into goal or onto the stumps. Not far wide of them. Super skills from Mark Adair. That time it was full and straight. That's what you're going to see, the mix of the Yorker length and the slower balls into the pitch. Very difficult. For the batsman to find the boundary. Again, slower delivery. That fooled the batsman. And another dot ball. And nine remaining now. 21 needed. Yeah, that time it was the off cutter. So we've seen the leg cutter, the off cutter, and the Yorker. Back to back to back. Brilliant execution of skills. No less than you'd expect from Ireland's opening bowler. And what a moment this has been. His opening spell yielded two wickets. These three dots are swinging it towards the OMS. They're going to have to push for two here, even though it's into the fielder's hand, but there's no way they're going to do that. That's brilliant fielding down there. Just the one. It's not enough. No, not enough. And somehow Tom Anders is, is going to need to find not just a boundary, but possibly a maximum or even two of them over the course of the coming deliveries. 20 to win off eight, a huge task now. Big hit required here. That's smart, clever bowling from Mark Adair. He knows the pitch is slow. He's bowling slow deliveries, and waiting for the ball to come out of the bat. Yeah, that beats was, the outside edge. That was fitting of a leg break that Shane Warren would have been happy with. Gripped and turned, goes past the outside edge of Tom Anders. He can't believe how much that gripped in the wicket. Brilliant knowledge of the home conditions. That's the home advantage here. Using the Belmont pitch to see OMS's favour. All or nothing. And that's going up and over the bowler's head. They're going to push for two here. They're going to have to come back for the second run, and they do so into the wicketkeeper's end, and they get home. So two runs to the total to end that, the penultimate over. And still a long way to go. 111 needed for victory with one over to come. Yeah, nearly just a, a brainless piece of cricket, really, from Tom Anders. He dawdled the first run, and it was only when Alan Lewis, the YMCA head coach, screamed push at the top of his lungs. You could have heard that all the way into Belfast City Centre. Did he try to get on his skates? He did get back. A direct hit would have been out. Back for two, and crucially for YMCA, still a huge task with 18 needed, but at least Rory and Anders is on strike. A monumental over needed now. 17 for the super, 18 to win. And it is going to be James Cameron Dow, as you suggested from the pavilion end, to finish off his fourth over and the final over of this game. Bowling wide of the wicket, left-handed round the wicket. Bowling to Rory Anders, who's on 17. And he is on strike. He needs to get after him. That's in the air. It should be out. There's a fielder underneath it. And taken. Adair is the hero again. Yeah, of course, it's that man, Mark Adair. Rory Anders had to try and clear the ropes. He got a good piece of it, but up the hill, a little bit into the wind. Adair takes the catch and adds the tumble for the home faithful. That's his family there behind him. Ricky and Joanne and Caitlin and Ross. Ross, of course, has made his way into the Northern Knights T20 side this year. The ball just seems to follow him when the big moments take place. A good catch from Mark Adair. Beautiful ball by Cameron Dow. JJ Cassidy is going to need a miracle 
in partnership with Tom Anders to try and get YMCA over the line. Of course, he won't be facing because the batsman crossed. So it will be Anders to face the first of the last five deliveries. And that was a fine catch from Mark Adair under that dropping ball. Did the right thing, cushioned it as it came into his chest and fell backwards. 93 for seven now in the last over. Five balls to go. And he's on a hat-trick now. Tried the expansive shot, didn't come off. You can see what Tom Anders was trying to do. He was trying to get it behind square on the leg side, but he has exposed his stumps. And Cameron Dow's dream spell continues. It just cannons into middle and leg. Tom Anders can't quite believe it. But it's been all CIYMS for the last two or three overs. And James Cameron Dow, three for nine. Spin was always going to be the key. Realistically, that is game over, John. 18 to win off four. Two men on naught at the crease. And great stuff from Cameron Dow. This is a hat-trick ball coming. Mikey O'Reilly to face. Uh, batsman number 10. And it's all about winning this game. They haven't pushed all the fielders in to try and Get this hat-trick for Cameron Dow. It's all about the victory. Oh, that could be it. The fielder underneath it is the bowler, and he's got his hat-trick. That's brilliant stuff from James Cameron Dow. Mikey O'Reilly had to go for the big hit. So three in a row, and a hat-trick for the Irish international James Cameron Dow. Well deserved. What a way to close out the season. A hat-trick, and it's going to be CIYMS off to represent Ireland. At the European Cricket League, as you said, Mike O'Reilly had absolutely no choice. Looking for a moment of glory, trying to heave it into the leg side for six. It just skewed off the outside edge. And how fitting it was that James Cameron Dow takes the catch off his own bowling. Beautiful shot there. Big grin on the tall left arm spinner. He's bowled beautifully today. And maybe Nigel Jones's master stroke as a captain was to hold him back for these last two overs. Maybe that was always his intention. That's why Alan Coulter bowled the 16th over. Now the writing's on the wall now. Can he get four? Nearly. <laughs> Very nearly. Just beat the outside of the bat. JJ Cassidy on strike. Kelly McDonald, the number 11, in at the non strikers' end. Two balls to come. Is that an LBW? Not given. They're going to run through for a leg bye. Somebody just shouted behind us that would just be greedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great scenes of delight for the home side here. COMS, so well supported. Big crowd in. It's a beautiful scene for the final day of club cricket they won the All-Ireland T20 Cup in 2019 they had to come into this playoff to challenge the winners yesterday of the 2020 edition in YMCA but YMCA's race was run yesterday winners yesterday they're going to come up short here today you have to say the better side has won and they've utilised these home conditions brilliantly yeah, it was a small total and that's just a single off the last ball of their innings and a well-merited victory for CIYMS who won the toss, decided to bat and a brilliant last over from James Cameron Dow. He gets his hat-trick and on 95 for 9 at the end of the 20 overs, chasing 111 for victory, 16 runs short and it is CIYMS's day and they will join the likes of Clubs side from Belgium, Denmark, England, Finland, France, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, Romania, Russia, Scotland, Spain and Sweden in La Manga next year. Yeah, 15 run victory for the home side. We felt 110 was a little bit under par, but it's proved to be more than enough for Nigel Jones and his men to defend and go off to, as you say, represent Ireland at the European Cricket League. Kyle McCallan is holding his arms aloft to me going, I told you, I told you 110 was enough. And those home conditions, look at the bowling figures. James Cameron Dow, four for 10 from his spell of four overs. Nigel Jones, a huge part of this victory, runs with the bat and two for 14 with the ball. 
But Marketer's spell just critical as well. Remember, he removed not just Jack Tector, but also Harry Tector. And when he removed the second Tector clean bold, you had to feel that was a massive moment of the match. But a special mention for Ted Britton coming back from illness to take one for 14 and capturing the big wicket of Simi Singh. And ended up being YMCA's top scorer. As you can see the bottom of your screen though, wickets falling with regular abandon, no more regularly than when James Cameron Dowd took a hat-trick. What a way to finish the club season. And we're just going to bring you some of the shots of the teams walking off there. Lovely scenes, great respect between these two sides. Absolutely. And James Cameron now just in front of us getting congratulations from Kyle McCallan. Well, Kyle, you called it. Yeah, I just had this feeling that, you know, the CI bowling attack is is really high quality. You know, there's internationals right throughout it. In difficult pit conditions, it was going to really take a, a, a top effort from the, the top six from Dublin YMCA. When they were three down the power play, I genuinely felt it was going to be a tough ask. Yeah, well, Kyle, as we know, John, is, is he just never wrong. So whatever he does, he's always getting it right. He called the victory for YMCA he's yesterday. The he's the ex-pro. He's <laughs> the ex-pro. the man who knows the stuff. He's called the big win today. But as you can see on your screen there, congratulations to CIYMS, the winners of this European Cricket League playoff. Great joy for them. And possibly, Kyle, you'd have to say fitting the fact that they were originally going to go out. Nobody could have predicted what has happened this year. They'll still get the trip out to La Manga. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, they, they, they were obviously in the tough end of a very tough... Duckworth Lewis lost by one run to Donna in the semi-final of, of, of the main competition. So, you know, Nigel Jones and the, and the squad here have, have dominated for the last couple of years and they, they will certainly represent Ireland with a plum out there and I think it'll take a very good side to beat them. Yeah, absolutely. You look at all the stars in their lineup. The stars of a line for them, CIYMS. Felt they might have just been short apart at the halfway stage with 110, but it hasn't been the big scoring blitzkrieg we're used to in T20 cricket, but two low scoring players. Yeah, and, and in many ways, you know, one of the things that, 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 I, that strikes me now about the modern player is that, that there was a, an absolute need to, to adapt to conditions today. When you're chasing less than on a ball, there was no need to play the expansive shots early in the innings. And I think Simi Singh's dismissal was a key one. He was looking quite dangerous. And for him to hold out at, at long on in the fashion that he did, you know, these games are won and lost in very small margins. And uh, fair play Nigel Jones, an outstanding tactician, a great captain, and he's got a side over the line. Yeah, the thoughts of Kyle McCallum, the ex-Irish international. A lot of happy men in NCU cricket, no more though than CIYMS, the winners of this European Cricket League playoff. So that's going to wrap up our coverage from a wonderful weekend here at Belmont. It closes out the club cricket season. We're still going to have some interprovincial cricket to bring you in both the men's and women's format. We'll bring you a couple of games from Malahide before the season rounds out as the shadows are cast across the ground. Let's hope this fine September weather continues. But for me, Andrew Leonard, my colleagues, John Kenny, Kyle McCallan, and Collie, David, all the team here at HBV Studios, our thanks to Cricket Ireland, our thanks to all the sponsors involved. It's been an absolute pleasure to bring you every ball of the last two days. Huge congratulations to YMCA, the champions of the Clear Currency All-Ireland T20 Cup yesterday. And today, the winners of the playoff, they're off to La Manga, that's CIYMS. We'll see you very soon. <laughs>